I can still see you, Jordan. We're fine. We are. I'm I'm in a no, singing mood. The thing I'm is, a, I, like can't, a... I can't interact at all. Like I can't roll or do. Hi, everybody. Hi, Mike. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt your thought there, Jordan. <laughs> Nothing. All right. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of that D&D podcast. You're going to have to uh, forgive me my excess exuberance. I'm having one of those uh, manic days. So um... there we go. Oh, beer all by myself. This will even me out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There's literally beer everywhere. So I... This is the kids. For those of you playing the home game, this is how you deal with a manic episode. Depressing. No, this, yeah, you're not actually supposed to do that. No. Do like not do that. Oh god, it's like a brown ale too. It's not the right stuff for a white shirt. Um, hi everybody. Uh, this is Mike Jackson Brodden for another episode of that D and D podcast. Tonight we bring back the D, that D and D podcast. Also the other Drinks? D. And the, the and the ampersand in the middle, right? <laughs> and dragons, which we changed to an N for legal reasons. Mm-hmm. It's really hard to search for ampersand. Eat that too. Yeah, ampersand. Right. Um, so the other cool thing is that uh, we're playing fifth edition, and I'm super excited. Um, I mean, less so because fifth edition, but because I get to play games with my friends on the internet, and that's awesome. And we get to play in a setting that I created. And um, ampersand does sound like a superhero of like uh, typesetting, maybe. Grammar. Grammar. It's way better than his arch nemesis. Her? Her? Empress Anne. Uh, Anne. Okay. So um, we got five people here with us tonight. Uh, you all knew who they are because we always have them with us. I'm finding more spilled beer everywhere. Uh, so why doesn't other people talk for a second while I undo the spill? Do we want to go and roll 20 order? Sure. Yes. Can we? Is that fixed? First? Cool. Hi, I'm Andrew Oatway, and tonight I am drinking uh, Vancouver Island Brewing Herminator, um, which is going to be, I feel, uh, key to the creative process. Um, and I, too, am excited to play 5th edition, edition Dungeons & Dragons with my nerd friends. Um, and the other great thing about that is uh, when you drink that Herminator, is that uh, every sip you know that uh, it'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> Aaron, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass you my book, but in the meantime, Jordan can talk. Hi, I'm Jordan. Um, this is my first time playing D&D ever of any edition, and tonight I will be playing a dwarf fighter. I don't have a player handbook, unlike I think everyone else here. Instead, I will be pretending to follow along with my adult coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it'll be just as helpful. <laughs> A lot of ways more so. This is the D&D book we're talking about. Next uh, on the list is... Hi, I'm Zach. And I am... A, I've played a lot of D&D, but I haven't played any recently. And I haven't played any of this edition, so I'm super excited to get to try it. Even if I'm not really expecting to love it. Um, and I am playing a religious barbarian? Which is totally new for me. This has never happened. <laughs> and... Uh, Named Yorha, and I'm back from the dead. Wait, hence the singing from earlier. Mm-hmm. We down. haven't seen we haven't seen the end of Yorha. And Aaron, I named him before I knew, and they now did. I oh, know. They did. <laughs> they did. Yes, they did. I did. What? You can check the Discord. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. Like, I, there's a character sheet dated like a million years ago that has the name on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, Aaron, uh, I had not known. <laughs> That's really good. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Wait, wait, Zach, you should say who who your um, barbarian worships. Somebody's a little bit narcissistic, huh? Yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a member of the Order, order of St. Rona, uh, the other hero that has come back from the dead. <laughs> she, I don't think she's actually come back. <laughs> yeah. I, I think How many times trapped. did Rona die? I think she's trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. <gasps> no, 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 not spiral, but it starts with an S. <laughs> oh, I'm sad. That's her. <laughs> you should have. You, you, you count, your countdown was too fast. I think. Sorry. Cycle does not start with an S. A never-ending story. <laughs> motorcycle. Hey. Still not an S. <laughs> Speed <laughs> motorcycle. Right. Boom. Got there. Speed bike. <laughs> Hi, I'm Adam. I will be playing a 
I guess a class that's not even in the basic handbook, but uh, generated by some wizard like host person, I'm pretty sure. Uh, a gnome artificer uh, who I still have yet to name, which is typical for most of my characters. And I am excited to play with one of my friends, but I'm not going to tell you which one. Can I suggest Ezra? Roll Can for I friendship. suggest Ezra? Roll for friendship? Roll for friendship? No. I Can I funny. suggest Norm? But yes. Norm starts with a G. Yes. Oh, oh. isn't I mean, there? There's a gnome named Norm, though. That's like a thing. Yeah. Huh. So the, the only name I have right now, my working name is Fritz. Mm, that's pretty good. I like yeah. it. That's strong. That's strong. But that means that I'm going to have to find a, a Stimmons. Stimmons. <laughs> Stimmons. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Y'all are monsters. Oh, of the highest caliber. Mm-hmm. So, I'm drinking um, Rowdy Atlas Hop Forward Rye Ale, brewed locally in Halewood. I have an interesting combination of hydrogen and oxygen. I mean, be careful about the too <laughs> yeah. many uh, oxygens of that. <laughs> or too few. I'll have the H two O two. Ah, now he's dead. <laughs> Well, you know, the, the bartender understood context and so poured another water. <laughs> um, so after, uh, uh, as, as Zach puts it, he of the implied sigh, we have. Oh, it's me. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm Aaron. I'll be playing the part of Case, who is a weird short bird person who has. Did, nobody knows what the rot is yet, right? I think a Kaith is like, isn't it like a Kaith a cat person? No, Kate that's Sith? a whole different, that's a whole different thing. Yeah, Kate Sith, right? Yeah. Kate Sith. There's Only no H on that one Kate except Sigh. at the end. Anyway, uh, so sure. I am a bird person, uh, and I, I guess a ranger more specifically, and I have um, been through some shit, which I guess we'll get into when we kind of go into character stuff a little bit more. Yep, 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 yep. Bake All it away, right. toys. All right. Um, so uh, I once listened to this podcast called um, or this show. Uh, I don't remember. It had Adam Cable, like uh, and Cobble? maybe JP Cobble, the, the fanciest of people that are awesome. And it had the uh, it was the Western shooting oh, game. You're talking about their dogs in the vineyard. Dogs in the vineyard. Yes, the delicious, delicious. Yeah, Austin dog. in it too. Yeah, it yeah. was that was a hell of a lineup. Good cast, yeah. That's a good lineup. Stop watching this garbage and go to YouTube right. and find roleplay dogs of the vineyard. <laughs> right, and yeah, watch all that first. Probably most of their channel, and then come back to us. Before you leave, like Kofi us some money though, please, and then come back. Well yeah. Did you say Kofi? Yes. It's like where you uh, can buy people coffee. Yeah, that's the idea, is you can like tip someone five bucks for a cool thing they did on the interwebs. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. K O F I might, might have a dash. I'm not sure. Okay, well, that's interesting. Cool. Um, save image. Yeah. <laughs> I think someone listened to us because our viewer count just dropped. No. no! Okay. No! Uh, so uh, they had an amazing um, 5 E Lich. Uh, they had an amazing intro uh, wherein they used fancy words to set the setting and then moved on from there. Um, I have some fancy words as soon as I upload this image of a lich and make it my background wallpaper for the setting because we've got to have something. There we go. Oop. Make you big. That's no, fine the way it is, I think. All the big. He's less threatening when he's small. Big, 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 big. Big. Oh. Crap. Also, there. you can get rid of the grid if you want. Oh, that's a good Oops. point because we don't have good stuff yet. In this before somewhere, donk, bonk. Yeah, it's on. It's on the, so. um, the special, the special person awesomes guide. I don't think so. Oh, think so. okay. Yeah. Um, that guy's got some shit so, to his arm. Yeah, it's like being wizarded back on. And uh, Andrew, if you notice, the magic is purple. Ooh. Ooh. Not that that ties into the thing that you said earlier that I hope nobody else heard. It's a good color. Yeah. So um, I'm gonna read a thing. I like that okay. Adam's name is pointing to the dead guy. <laughs> yeah. That's perfect. Canon now, right? Yeah. Oh. Now, you've all been dead at some point in time. 
So I have two bits of fiction to read, and I wanted to read this one first because uh, it's brand new and no one's uh, type read it, and it evokes the sense that I wanted to have for this setting. Uh, and the other one was like more backstory and like helpful and stuff. But this is a um, flavor year. So <clears throat> Ashley, protect me, cried Elias as he pulled away from the net, revulsion contorting his features around a horrified grimace. The thing might have looked normal once, just another bluefish among the countless millions of the sea. But now it was something different, something twisted and wrong, rotten. The left half of its body had melted into a new shape. Scales flecked off, skin twisted away, and the flesh beneath puckered and twitching, with dozens of tiny eyes and gnashing teeth. Half of it twitched and writhed on its own while the rest of the fish was dead still. Its original eye was uh, chalky and white, bulging out of its head, straining against the infection that had taken hold around it. That's the infection, boy. Have you really never seen it? He gave the kid a skeptical glance, doubtful that he actually had the 14 years we require of sailors. It's a real soul, rare soul who lives on these boats and hasn't seen the rot, either in what we drag out of the water or, actually forbid, in another person. Despite the Grand Crusades from a couple hundred years ago, we still find pockets of infection that had looted our godsent soldiers. No, no, I've seen it, he stammered. In, in pictures, Miss Charlotte covered it, showed us drawings of what to look out for, signs that we wandered too far, went to worry, and went to run. I didn't, I didn't think we'd find it in our first catch. How are we supposed to eat these if they're infected? Uh, Elias wasn't working as he talked, just staring at the rotten thing. I took a step back from the cleaning table, making sure my arms were free. Do your duty, son. I motioned to the big furnace at the rear of the boat, at the gout of flames that licked towards the sky. Only fire purges infection. He hesitated before reaching down, and I tensed. But he grabbed the rotten thing, carefully by the tail, and headed straight towards the back. Good, I thought to myself, just keep moving. But he didn't. His steps slowed, his eyes turned down to what he held in his hand, and he stopped. For a moment, the calling of the seabirds fell silent. The crack of my muskets shattered the peace, and the boy fell dead. I wept tears from my eyes as I grabbed the damned fish and the body of the poor soul had hopefully gone to a better place. Should have listened to Charlotte, kid. I dumped his body into the fire, releasing a fresh batch of oily black smoke into the sky. May all the ashen saints greet you on your new path. I reloaded my, my, my musket and turned back to my work as white ash began to fall down around me. <laughs> That's it. I'm super proud of that. It was evocative in my head. So, um... It's called team killing, and I don't approve. Well, <laughs> I was going to say. So we've met my character. <laughs> <laughs> He's the one who got uh, shot. So this is, this so is, this is a world that five E New sorry, Vegas. Five E New Vegas, yeah. Uh, so um, this is a world that uh, is roughly akin to 17th century Europe in parts. Uh, but think of the Black Death that had run through a couple hundred years before uh, as this extra planar rotting disease thing and these portals pop up and infect the ground and cause things around them to to twist and malform and become uh corrupted manifestations of themselves um and it spreads if it's left too long um it'll creep out the portals will get bigger um and uh like animals and stuff get twisted and rotten disgusting um people get horribly corrupted and evil and start doing awful stuff, and uh, also start looking pretty freaky. Um, what other interesting tidbits to hit? Uh, hopefully you all have read the sh setting creation document that we started a little bit ago. Uh, long story short, there was a savior figure named Ashley uh, who came uh, and helped deliver uh, our country from uh, big pox of infection. Uh, the concept is that uh, here, this this little paragraph here helps real well too. Did Aaron, Aaron did you read this from last time? Any chance? Hmm? Did you read the uh, shared setting doc that we created? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, the big the big thing here is that uh, Ashley Brakeel, Samuel Pendragon, the King from the Sky, sent from the heavens, wielding purifying fire and righteous thunder, and that wherever he strolled in the battlefield, his enemies fell dead at a glance. Uh, Ashley had uh, many who came after them uh with a phrase i believe we used were uh the king ashley king song ashley? was never the king ashley was never one of never one person but a succession of men and women of all races who fought for a world they took up his guns and his name to drag us out of the fetid ages closing portals that spread the rot and reuniting our four fallen kingdoms north and south still exist sure but more or less united against a common threat um and that's where we're at uh, so we are in a vague approximation of Europe that probably doesn't look like Europe from the 17th century. Uh, we have a handful of firearm firearms um, that exist, not like uh, big heavy repeating guns or anything like that, but like muskets and arquebuses and blunderbusses, uh, and some of the uh, noble folks have heavy revolver sort of things. Um, and uh, 
if you've read the document for the which is a terrible audio if you've read the document um we are t- started talking about this a couple weeks ago i believe mm-hmm. yeah technology is approximately 17th century uh there are a variety of weaponry uh match lock wheel lock snap lock flint lock firing devices paper cartridges are just starting there are bayonets there are simple hand grenades um and uh <laughs> Ashley was a gunsmith from another world who introduced the concept of rules. So uh, we're going to skip on to uh, gathering and discussion campaign creation. Now, uh, if you've listened to me ever do a thing before, uh, you'll know that I have uh, an incredible soft spot for Dresden Files to the point where we abandoned a second season of a Star Wars campaign to fire up Dresden Files like mid-planning. And uh, I love that campaign so much, it's literally infected everything I've run since. Um, so we are, or I am stealing the campaign creation section from the Dresden Files Accelerated book. Uh, if you all have that, I think it's on 84, page 84, you can follow along at home. Uh, the first step is for gathering a discussion during campaign creation is to talk about desirable campaign themes. Um, I wrote, wrote a th- couple things down uh, while I was doing this document, and we fleshed them out a little bit more um, a couple weeks ago. But the first thing that we had talked about was law, and, the, I had written down was law and order versus chaos and discord. Um, I like discord. It's way better than Skype. I, I also like Discord. Um, Discord has very many uh, important things to tell about uh, friendship and being magic. Um, the uh, next item that we were that I wrote down was the natural world versus extraplanar aberrations. Um, and the third was divinity versus technology. Uh, our world is not a world with gods. Uh, it is a world that explicitly has been uh, forsaken or abandoned. Uh, it's not super clear why. Um, although some of the player characters have some ideas on what's going on there. Um, but otherwise, let's see. Some of the world is untamed. The world is ancient. Conflict shapes the world's history. The world is magical. Uh, and I got a little section here in this uh, 5e world building uh, document that I put together out of the book that has some suggested uh, named gods if we wanted to go that route. Um, so yeah, we've had a uh, decline of divine magic. Uh, and the lack of miracles. And when you go from a uh, religion that can routinely raise the dead to uh, divine figures that can't even cure light wounds, uh, people tend to wander away from uh, formal recognition of them. And after that goes on for a couple hundred years, um, it's to the point where the South, uh, Southern country doesn't, Southern kingdom, excuse me, uh, ignores the concept of religion altogether and has forbid the worshiping of, uh, of the concept of deities. And the last point, uh, this came out specifically during character creation uh, that we talked about last couple weeks ago is that rebellion against a corrupt or stagnant organization. Um, rebellion. Can I, can I put a bit of a spin on that one? You can do. So, so I am not dictating anything about, this stuff so this is just like i have an idea let's do that was me politely trying to say that i would like to put a spin on that one fuck that shit do it (laughs) um essentially Uh, excuse me instead of uh rebelling against a corrupt or stagnant organization maybe just like compelling a stagnant organization to action like how do you make how how, like solving um a uh what do you call it um uh, t- solving collective action problems, basically. How do you start a like, grassroots movement? Yeah, like the world is teetering on the brink of destruction. There are organizations that have, like, capital P power and capital A authority. Let's get them solving this problem. Okay, I dig it. Okay, cool. Um, I think you all have right access to this document, so feel free to to chop things down there. Um, one thing we do not have, uh, is, uh, things to avoid. Um, the, if there are concepts that are played out, if there is stuff that you're not super interested in, um, if there's subjects that you just don't want to touch about, um, you can either add add that here now, um, or we can brush them under the rug and talk about them later, however you want to do that. Um, I wasn't sure if there's, if uh, y'all had a thing, but let's, is there anything you all want to avoid? Not too big in general on people getting raped. So if we can avoid that, I think okay. that's a st- <laughs> yeah. like I think that's a thing that the channel just doesn't. Yeah, I mean it's not a thing we've ever done, but it's just you know yeah. I don't. I, don't I, I like to imagine that goes without saying yeah. at least on yeah. our channel. 
If, or anywhere where I'm rolling dice. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was thinking more along the lines of like, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> themes, themes and conflicts, and right. Like, if you don't want the Winter Queen to show up or whatever, like, let's and the Dresden Files like, use an example of that. But like, <clears throat> I'm just. Are call. there any D and D tropes we want to avoid? Right, mm -hmm. I'm going to avoid the everybody shows up in a bar and becomes friends over a fight thing because no. But why? A food fight. No. Yeah. No all-powerful NPC that comes and solves all of our problems and then disappears in a puff of smoke? Listen, okay, you well. handed me one of my characters through a plot wizard once, Aaron. <laughs> and I got an endless and it was amount of rad. shit for it. <laughs> no, it was rad. That was like, fuck this. We're, we're making the game serve <laughs> us? Yeah. I've also had somebody play a divine cat, so I mean, anything goes. That's fair. Okay, now I just feel attacked. <laughs> <laughs> Came here to have a good time. Starting to see a pattern here. I don't know. Uh, you know, just putting these pieces together. Huh. I'm not. I'm not saying I don't make difficult characters for other people. <laughs> I think you mean amazing, fun characters. I mean, they can be the same thing. Stupid cat disappeared after like episode three, though, and left church with his ass hanging out for most of the season. Maybe yeah, after hands. I saved you from, like, Napalm? Twice. Where were you when Satan <laughs> showed up, <laughs> pal? Where were uh, you when I fought the devil? So, uh, a, a big now. themes to avoid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> nice segue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't really, you know, have any issues with something just because, like, you know, I'm not as burnt out on these type of things as you guys are, so I won't be as annoyed by them. So, whatever uh, we end up doing, I'm probably fine with. Yeah, and I mean, I think I think we all are um, used to playing with each other enough to where hopefully if, if somebody does a thing and it's like real big no-no, you know. Oh, actually, I, I do have a thing I would like to avoid. Okay. Annoyed. Murder holding and then never moving from that. That is an excellent trope to write down to things to avoid. Murder hobos. Okay, but, but like, Mike... I'm starting off as somebody who did like a lot of bad shit and killed people and I don't have a home and I'm wandering, so I might literally be a murder hobo? And My I'm character is attacked. literally homeless and undead and has a giant <laughs> freaking stick with a pointy thing. What I it. meant was strictly no, never yeah. moving from there. Yeah. And what I meant is you will have compelling character traits that will drive you forward, damn it. <laughs> I'm turning this campaign around. We're going home. Going home to fate accelerated. <laughs> That's right. Where you only get experience for rolling failures. Act appropriately or I'm going to bring the Dragon Balls out. <laughs> It responds appropriately to the situation, or else it gets the hose again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I guess that's also probably worth mentioning, is that uh, I tend to humber the shit out of everything I touch. Um, that's a lie. I tend to humber D&D &D a lot. Everything else I run vanilla. Uh, so we're going to be avoiding uh, the trope of combat taking too long. Thank <laughs> Christ. Um, Are we tracking? I ammo? mean, that's why I'm a sorcerer. So, <laughs> yeah. can we avoid tracking ammo? No. Fuck. No, no, no. We can't avoid that because you're playing a ranger, yep. and uh, if you roll something bad, I'm going to hit you with the ammo. Oh, I mean, that's fine. But do I have to like track how many times I just shoot a regular dude on a good shot in like a fight? Uh, only if it's the type of weapon that requires you to reload between shots, because that's actually a balancing mechanic in 5 AB, and we'll see how long. Yeah, I have but to like, okay it's that. a long bow. Like I have, I have 20 quiv like arrows in my quiver. Yeah, me too. I shoot one dude. I have 19 arrows in my mm. quiver. Do y'all remember the last time I tried that? No. <laughs> it was a game called The World's Largest Dungeon, and you were there, and you were there, and you were there, and um, it didn't last very long. Well, I was going to say, uh, if Kate runs out of arrow, she can just like pluck a feather out and just fletch a, a new arrow. Yeah, from okay, so I have a thin air. feather. Am I just yeah. going to pull a stick out of my ass or something? Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, listen, <laughs> yeah. where's the you rest sound of like this? you got one in there already. <laughs> you you wow. supplied it. Wow, rude. It's funny because about exactly 15 seconds 
ago, I typed wow rude into the <laughs> Twitch chat for another thing. <laughs> Don't look over there. Oh, wow. Yeah. I just yeah. did. That's the best thing. I like the Twitch chat. <laughs> yep. Hello, Twitchers. What are you, Ray Romano um, now? What you, what you... <laughs> I mean, look, man, my voice just does what the voice wants to do. I can't control it. Um, that sounded unpleasant. Uh, so we had a few things to avoid there. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to calibrate the humor in the firing because I've got Jordan. i got to get Aaron now, too. Um, what? All right, so... You're getting worry, people to laugh. Yeah. Aaron. Uh, identify <laughs> factors. <laughs> I've really never laughed location. before in my life. I mean, didn't we come up with the Ash Wardens? They would be a faction. Yeah, North yeah but like, seem like obvious factions. Yeah. So, um, we had talked briefly. Um, we had talked briefly about him being set in a Northern Kingdom versus a Southern Kingdom, um, versus ooh, not religious reformation, it's political reformation. Um, persecution, uh, specifically because I was more, I was curious if you had preferences. This is a way of you telling the GM which one of these concepts you're more interested in. Uh, a politically ish focused game in the Northern Kingdom, where worshiping the old gods is something that's just chill and people don't mind too much, um, or a uh, religious focused game in the Southern Kingdom where there's an Inquisition going on. Uh, religious prosecution is rife. Hi, I'm a new messiah. Or neither. <laughs> <laughs> Representative messiah, of, of an old order. People. Somebody hug Adam. What? Hi. What's up? Nothing. You haven't said anything. I want to just internet hug. Hi. Oh, no, yeah. I'm just I'm reading 5e. It's fun. Okay. Do you have uh, there's a lot do you of have any tax thing in mind for your character? Yeah, yeah, he's, he's just he's catching up on the rules in general. Oh, okay. No, yeah, I'm just digging through like all the the you know weapon stats and all kinds of other fun things that to refresh. Mm -hmm. Okay. But no, as for your last question, I don't think Fritz cares about politics or religion. You Unless will. Blows up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> um. I mean, both of those are incendiary. Well, and I mean, like, what's the delineation between reli like, is it religious politics and versus like class politics, essentially? <laughs> yeah, because they both seem political, as yeah. in the study of who gets what, when, and how. And I mean, all everything is political. So yeah. Did we decide how strong the theocracy is? Like, it could be all of the above at the same time. Yeah. So, um, I mean, there's there's a there's an imperial cult. Uh, especially says the uh, the current emperor is divinely chosen. Um, <laughs> they are not a whether or not they are a divine being is left fuzzy, right? So you, you believe in the uh, the divinity that chose the emperor. Um, uh, in the south, they explicitly explicitly say that the emperor is not divine. Uh, it's just immortal. In the north, they're like, eh, we worship a giant pantheon of uh, Norse-inspired gods, so whatever. <laughs> and it's all considered part of the same group, or it's split up? I think uh, it's the emperor, one empire, and then yeah, it's, it's split empire. north and south, like, yeah, there was geographically a... and kind of politically. Yeah, but the, 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 the imperial cult, is that... Relegated to the south, or is that it's, the imperial cult is supposed to be like the official religion of the empire, but it's not strictly enforced in the north, and it's denied in the south. Okay, they're doing good. <laughs> yeah, but so it's not terribly strong a theocracy. Then okay, it's 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 not a theocracy. It's like a, a whatever the thing is where you have a one dude yeah. rule. Yeah, it's a monarchy. It's not, it's not religious. It's whoever. It, it's more like, uh, you know, the church is ruled by a pope that's supposed to be chosen by God. Yeah, that's the same deal as most monarchies, though. Is yeah, clearly divine mandate that got the crown on their head, not the fact that really? 
right four generations ago killed. their cousin married their other cousin yeah. So, yeah, so if there's an imperial right. cult, then that's probably, I mean, in my head, the imperial cult is obviously used to establish and maintain divine mandate for rule, right? Yes. It's not respected everywhere. That puts the, like, foundational rulership on pretty shaky ground, too. Okay, cool. Then we're on the same page. I'm good okay, with that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, cool. If if the, the line, religious prosecution the of the Inquisitor actively uh, uh, seeking out people who worship gods in general and putting them to the torch was not clear enough, that's yeah. Civil war is also brewing on the cusp of everything else that's going on. It, it I mean, how federal is this system? Because it sounds like North and South have like at least some autonomy and probably some kind of geographic divide. Yeah. So, um, if, if imagine uh, Western Europe, right? You've got France, which is a which was one of the countries that was or one of the kingdoms that was involved in the Crusades hundreds of years ago, but that is not part of the empire. Yeah. Right. Uh, you've got uh, Austria, Germany, or Prague, you know, the whole uh, that whole area, uh, the Holy Roman Empire from the 13, 14, 1500s. That area is the Northern Kingdom. Okay. Um, and then you've got. Uh, the Spanish kingdom to the south, which actually was all of Spain and all of Italy, except for like a few republics to the north. Mm -hmm. That's the southern kingdom. Okay. Um, and then you've got stuff to the east. And like, they're being held together by an incredibly tenuous grasp that is quite possibly literally held together with chewing gum and prayer. Uh, right. And is sort of dissolving. And maybe there's someone trying to take over in the south. And the north is like... People in the north are more like, hey, you know, France recently, uh, not France recently, decided that that uh, you know we don't need to have divinely chosen people. Maybe we should go from a feudalistic country to democracy because that's when Let's that shit started happening. Cake. What's that? Let's all eat cake. Right. Maybe you don't have the divine right to the land, and I should own it. Have you mm -hmm. considered that? Zach, stop. <laughs> We're not playing with Frank Germani and Spahn. Okay, sorry. I will give you the names of the plays. Uh, but yeah, so uh, does everyone have a... Oh. Grusha. Hey, would you, would you ask? Does everyone have a, have a mental, solider mental concept of the geography and the situation and stuff? Uh... Are are we using that like uh, map with the the big sea in the middle and then the ocean sort of around the outside that you posted? Uh, so oh, I but... really like that map. Um, yeah, yeah. No, that was a good map. Yeah, it's a solid eight and a half out of ten wood map again. Right. Like, I also just want to spend forever mapping stuff, so probably not the <laughs> best person to talk to about this. Like, yep. this is what I did professionally for years. Okay. I'm pulling it up for the people at home. I mean, we could make it a, a map in Roll20 as well. Mm -hmm. So that we have it in future. But, like, the club is so good. I really like the one on your page that's just like two t two fairly small continent islands and then just a bunch of dots in the ocean. I also like like every time I click to create new world, I sat there watching it paint four thousand pixels and like, yeah, there's a whole campaign here. <laughs> <laughs> that one's pirates. I like how yeah, that one's Aaron's on a boat, y'all. I I like I like how much <laughs> land there is in that one. That Aaron just had up on the stream, like mm -hmm. with the inland sea, like that's like that seems like a very dry planet. Yeah. The the Balond one, the first one that I have mapped to the globe that I play like. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's like it's still like fifty percent water. Yeah. But it's Four only percentage. fifty percent yeah. water. Uh so yeah, we're going to take place. If you look in the uh, the map, you should see an area that's like whispering waste, poison weld, copper desert, weeping jungle sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
uh, that would probably be the equivalent of where we are with the Copper Desert. Um, Whoa. Dragon's Veil. Mm-hmm. The Jungle of Scales. Yep. Bloodmoor River. Uh, if you go over to the uh, the six cities of Leon, which actually might be better, uh, there is Incan Place named Jungle. <laughs> The it's Garden the of north. Demons. Holy mm-hmm. crap. Yeah, the it's... far north, there's the Citadel of the Vampire Prince. Yeah, like, so now you know what I'm saying is that every time I press go, I was like, oh, there's a million campaigns. I Let's just play in these awesome worlds. I, I, I really I love like that Ink Island. and Place name Jungle, though. That is super funny to me. It is pretty yeah, we good. Might actually, we might actually go with um, Ooh, the Black the, Temple uh, of Sorrows. Right, the Black Temple of Sariel area is the Northern Kingdom, and the yeah. uh, the Garden of Demons is the Southern. Okay, so emo as shit. I like the, the if you go all the way to the south, there's an area where it's the Spider's Web and Spider Web Vale on opposite sides of like this area that's called Vales that people yep. clearly live in. So yep. like, yeah, we just live here surrounded by spiders all the time. <laughs> yeah. Dying probably. Giant spiders. No, no, no. see, what? that's just that's fantasy Australia. <laughs> what if they're spider people? Well, I think oh. they definitely are. Yeah. Okay. So birds. Yeah, you did an amazing job of bringing us back onto the point that we're supposed to be, which is creating the game that we're going to be running in like a week. So um, factions. Um, I don't know what we're going to call these guys. Uh, I have like nine different names here. The Empire's Dogs of War, King Ashley's Regiment's Renown, and the Ash Wardens. Ash Wardens feels right. I like it. Yeah. I like Ash Wardens. I like Ash Wardens. And which ones are these people? I'm, I'm taking my own notes on stuff. So, um, uh, the Ash Wardens are... Uh, we talked about this. So, uh, there is the idea... Um, that after King Ashley, the King Ashley's plural, um, successfully uh, finished the crusade and uh, have kind of like um, stopped being around, um, uh, they founded an order uh, to keep their uh, this concept going of yeah. always being out there and closing these gates that spread the route and being ever vigilant for these sorts of events. Um Jesus. Uh, what's up, Yorha? All right. So, if you start at the vampire, if you start at the Citadel, the Vampire Prince, right? Hold on. Mm-hmm. Let me pull up this map uh, again. There's a Blighted Veil. West, there's a Stronghold of Poison Tears. You go south from there, there's a Stronghold of Eternal Night. And you go a little bit to the southwest of that, there's the Poison Wield, the Whispering Waste. I mean, I feel like there's your Blight right there. The weeping yeah. jungle, yeah, yeah. In the jungle, the weeping jungle, the spiders cry for death. <laughs> I wish the trees wouldn't cry. <laughs> yeah, so now we're getting to the spirit of things. Uh, yeah, yeah, so the Ashworns exist to um, uh, fight back the blight. Uh, and they, that is their rot. calling. The, the rot. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> it's not the blight. It's you, not just, the blight. you just show right. your hand. Such a... Dude, no, my hand is is publicly on display on the fucking. Right? I know, but still, right. like, yeah. What happened, guys? Guys, the Dark Tower is amazing, and I want to do that, and I and all these other things are cool, and I'm playing this Pandemic Legacy game, and let's do all the things. Okay, we'll just start with one thing, and we'll see what works. <laughs> um, so yeah, we got these Ash Wardens, yes. uh, Crusaders, the Rots. And um, the we had talked about this before, but Sen, um, Senrathi uh, and uh, Yorha specifically had ties back to um, the uh, the early Ashley or the early, uh, the groups that before went to uh, fight against the Rot. So I don't think I have direct ties to that. Okay, what were you, what were you then? I, I think I'm so. My my backstory is like folk hero who stole food to feed people. Okay. Um, um and I'm thinking pre- previous incarnations. I have I don't think I dug into those. I think Yorha basically found me because 
uh, it was like, hey, there's a person who's actually working like divine magic. And right. that's a oh. weird thing. Those were my notes that I took in the back of my head. I'm sorry. No worries. Cool. Um, <laughs> good yeah, good to know that I'm... What the hell is the guy's name from... Uh, anyways, yeah, carry on. Yeah. Um, so the idea was that the Ash Wardens have sort of fallen out of favor as the rot has been beat back in the main hearts of the kingdom. Uh, there's been a couple hundred years of relative peace. Um, it is a thing that they still keep an eye out for, but it is no longer... Um, a driving force of the empire uh, to be forever vigilant. All right? it's, they've had enough peace for enough years that they don't think that they need to be watching out for it as much. Is that right? To, cut, to catch that idea? Well, I think they've they've been getting complacent, and yeah, we'd also push sort of the idea there was within the Ash Wardens themselves they were pretty full thing. But maybe they just weren't getting like the resources and stuff that they needed to do the job. Yeah. Right. Which I mean makes sense with a civil war brewing and uh, dickhead nobles being dickhead nobles. Am I right? Mm-hmm. Sinrathi was. We kicked around the idea of them being uh, a member of like the arcane auxiliary for the Ash Wardens. Yeah. Well, I thought that was. Um, I thought that was Fritz's thing. Was oh, that's definitely going to be Fritz. like a like magic enchanter or like gunsmith or something. Yeah. Well, I think when we were trying to figure out how you knew Fritz and why Vasha oh, yeah. was there. Yeah, yeah, I was like trying to get. Yeah, I was working with the Ash Wardens, being like, "Yo, let's let's solve some stuff. I can burn rot. I can heal people. You need divine guidance. I got divine guidance as a cantrip." I should actually figure out what my spells do. No. No. Um, I didn't find out. <laughs> whoa. Whoa. Uh, that was well played. Good pitch. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, we should have a few more factions uh, just for people that are going to be or uh, groups that are going to be players uh, in this uh, in the game. So uh, we've got sort of the group that is maybe a little antagonistic, but also sort of like um, like p potentially an ally in the Ash Wardens. Um, at least uh, seems like they will become less complacent when shit comes home to roost. Um, do we have uh, thoughts of what we're going to have as um, either allied or antagonistic factions to that. I think everyone has a vested interest in burning out the rot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think most alliances, like it wouldn't be too difficult to roll into a city or a village or like outside a fort and be like, Hey, we're going to go fuck up this portal. You want to come with, get a detachment of guards to come with and be like red shirts. Um, okay. But I imagine most of those alliances will be incredibly temporary and incredibly self-serving. Absolutely. It, I mean, it seems like we're doing like a capital G good. Like it's hard to argue against the cause of like, let's maybe stop murdering the world. I thought you were gonna say capital G ghost busting. <laughs> yes. I mean, it makes me feel good. Shit, got there before I did. Well done. Um <laughs> Oh, but I, I, I think, like, I mean, a, like, antagonistic forces, a cult of the rot seems obvious. Mm, yeah, uh, there's always weirdos who worship the thing that's trying to destroy the world. I mean, maybe they're inspired by um, Malthusian philosophy of, like, yeah, maybe the world is over and there are too many people living on it. And we've exceeded the carrying capacity, so if we murder a bunch of folk, more of us can live. Um, so, I mean, yeah, like your standard doomsday cultists, I'm assuming there's something behind the rot, which also probably cares. Um, I can't imagine too many people who are rotten like us. Also, like, so, Kate, you're like rotting. Mm -hmm. Um... Given that Mike's Flavor Country intro was literally a kid being shot. 
A oh, kid now, not a weird looking no, no, spider no. bird. The, re- the reason I wear armor is basically to hide the rot. Well, so I was going to be like, are you kind of like um, a leper in Darkest Dungeon? I haven't like you wear the armor, but like we, we know that you're like infected and you wear like bandages around most of your like around the rot. And it's like sanctified and like to well, keep. Your... Problem is, I don't believe in all that sanctification shit. So I think it's like. I... So would wait, you... wait, wait, wait. So hang on. Let me throw a flag. Um, the concept of sanctification is coming back with Sinrathi and Yorha. Right. It would be magically imbued. Like, like, you know, like it actually feels better or it actually helps. Right. Or... It'd, be, it'd be magical fire that keeps the rod at bay by constantly burning you like bandage, ever burning bandages sort of thing. <laughs> okay. I, I, I was going to say we're like, it's, it's this or get shot in the spine. Right. And so like getting shot in the spine is a compelling argument. I, like, I don't want anybody to start a character that's like, yeah, I'm, infected with the thing that twists people and cause everyone to die is like let's like i think we can find something that's not going to be so fatal yeah i think well, i think where it is currently is like mostly hidden and i think for some reason that maybe she's trying to get to the bottom of she's somehow like the rot has gone into remission almost like it stops spreading it's still there and it's can still I... like this thing but like she it's not taking over can... Can I pitch an alternative? And it's that, like, your rot touched in that, like, someone close to you died to the rot, and, like, that's how you are touched by it. Not physically, not, like, skin-to-skin contact, but, like, it has ruined your life. Mm, It's in my, not my blood, but my blood. It's in your soul. Right. Also, if I didn't, if it wasn't completely obvious in the uh, the pitch, the idea is that the rot kind of, it's not just a physical thing. If you're around it, it corrupts your mind. Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, can I make can I make a secondary pitch? I mean, it's 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 a baseball game. Pitch away. Okay. Tanner, too slow. We've already sort of put together, at least at one point, that like me coming back and Sinrathi getting divine powers was maybe indicative of some larger thing at work that we didn't fully understand yet. That thing might also have done something like wipe out or stall the the rot that was in case somehow. Or like cured but not healed? Yes, something like that. Is, is that why I'm with you guys? Like I have to keep getting treatment or something so yeah, it doesn't like reactivate? I, I imagine the two of us are tied very closely together because it's like, here's one of the few people we know who can, like, do something about this. Yeah. And here's, like, a patient zero. Yeah, I like it. So, this is like an addict. Well, like, I mean, yeah. Or similar. I imagine this process does not feel pleasant by any means. I, well, I would, you, you know it's time for a treatment when your skin starts to physically crawl. Sun's getting real low. <laughs> God, that was so good. <laughs> hey, big guy. Sun's getting low, real low. Sun's going down. <laughs> I I thought you were going to say, you know it's time for treatment when she starts molting more than normal. <laughs> when she starts molting things that aren't feathers. Right, when she starts actively pulling them out of her skin, like like, yes. like take There's, off the because, armor for the night, and like scales and teeth come out, and it's like uh, Senrathi, Senrathi, we um, <clears throat> thing because, need a thing. Come over here for a blessing. <laughs> yeah, I need a re up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, that feels strong. Um, yeah. So I wanted to know more about the Civil War factions. Like, what is what's like the race situation like in this universe? Like, what's what's the most um, populated race in this these two nations? I guess since there halves. I kind of hope they're a fairly even melange. Honestly, it doesn't like. It doesn't make a huge quantity of, like, the dwarves live in this one mountain and, like, five of them live elsewhere. 
I, I'm a, like if it's the 1700s, I'm a, and we have guns. I'm assuming there's some pull of urbanization and like a dawning of automation in labor to some extent. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the dwarves couldn't properly industrialize inside a mountain without asphyxiating. Yeah. So some of them are into that. <laughs> <laughs> No, but like the kind that doesn't have a safety word. Oh, <laughs> yeah. My beer is disappearing rapidly. Yeah, mine too. <laughs> oh, I'm out of water. Who did this? Sorry, that was probably me. This cannot you kept, continue. You kept handing it over to me. We need to. We need to get some prop cups. <laughs> um. So. Okay, well, if we can't do races, what, what are the two Civil War factions like then? Well, I, I I sort of intentionally designed nothing with races so that people could be like, I'm a bird person. It's like, all right, well, that right. fits in fine because I don't, I don't like it. It's not a nation of frog people versus a nation of black elves, which I meant dark elves. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that kind of got weird. Yeah. Little. Let's add black elves to the do not do list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Whoa. <laughs> um. Who's the frog people? The the frog locks. Frog locks. Mm -hmm. EverQuest throwback. Nineteen ninety eight. Oh. Um. I thought you were talking about bullywogs. Oh, that's too. Yeah. So um, I I get a feeling that everything's kind of like, sort of, multi potted together. Like, there are dwarves and industrial things and the elves hang out in tree places. And, like, there's probably, like, an elven nation to the to the off to the side where most of them tend to hang out. And elves are somewhat less populous, I guess, because none of you have chosen to be elves. <laughs> but, I mean... It, are like, any of us human? I, I am. I was about okay. to say something about that, though. I was going to be like, yeah, this almost feels like a D&D &D party, but we have too many humans. So what, yeah, what so is Yorha? The oh Yorha's human. Yorha's human. God. The uh, the Empire is that is the Empire largely fairly meta metropolitan? Like is it pretty integrated? So like um the, the it was their pitch, the thing that could make me super weird is if I'm the last human too. And the last airbender. And the last yeah. starfighter. <laughs> and the last samurai. <laughs> no, he's the last not. Jedi. I'm Cruz. Um, so in in my head, can anything like the Southern Kingdoms had lost like eighty percent of their population. Um, oh. and and I don't think that um that's so nobody has the ability to be picky about who lives where. Mm -hmm. It's just they're desperately. They were desperately struggling to hang on after the, the first big rot. Yeah. So, this is not necessarily into, like, character creation, but this is possibly, like, a job or a quest or whatever. Does the rot destroy buildings? No. Because there could be a lot of, like, capital tied up in the south if 80% uh, of the people died and none of their shit broke. Yeah. That's a lot okay. of money. Like there I are make for some really neat uh, sessions. Have you played XCOM 2 War of the Chosen, Mike? Uh no, it is on my wish list though. Okay. Um, because it is very good and it has some urban missions that are also very good. Wait, uh War of the Chosen is the expansion, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm I'm totally getting that for Christmas. I, I've been Told that I can't purchase anything except for Fallout 4 VR, so. <laughs> Fair. Um, yeah, so uh, uh, War of Northern Aggression. I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, please, please no. <laughs> yeah. Well, how <laughs> down there? We're literally carpetbagging the South, you guys. Like, <laughs> yeah. We just laid out the plan. We're going into the South with bags, taking and stuff, stealing and their shit back north. Back, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I mean that that I mean, that sort of quest can go multiple ways, right? Like, hey, stop the these, these fucks from stealing our stuff. Or we're in the south, and people in the south are like, "Yo, that village, three doors over, go ransack it because we need to not starve this winter." 
Yeah. The if the South took a, an eighty percent hit to population, um, and has probably lost a ton of territory and stuff down there, how bad was the North hit? So the um the rot start in, started in uh the the equivalent of like, um, Italy and Spain that it started in the Southern Empires. It was brought to the Southern Empires from somewhere else, um, but the Southern Kingdoms from somewhere else else and it arrived mostly on ships at first. Uh, and nobody had any idea what the fuck to do when it started. Yeah, people that's... just started like mutating and like you know they just put, like trying to board people up in their homes and that didn't work. Uh, and it just got worse and worse and worse until it started spilling out of Spain up north through the mountains towards um, the northern territories. And uh, their response was to burn everything because they're kind of Viking descendants. Okay. Also, fireworks. So and, and mm-hmm. fireworks. And they were able to use what they learned to beat that back. Uh, and then, like, uh, King Ash came. King Ashley came from the sky, wielding fire and thunder, uh, and led a crusade to uh, seek out the rot and drive it back to where it came from. Which was basically back into the south. No, it was out of the south. So the, the idea was that uh, uh, they... They pur- purged every po- po- pocket of infection and patch of rot they could find across all of Europe. Okay. Um, and and formerly had one empire uh, from two major countries. The one, the country that had just fallen to shit and didn't have two, uh, one kingdom that had fallen to shit and there was nobody left. So it's theirs now. Um, and then the not France and not Poland and not Britain areas were all just well, Britain didn't get hit, but the equivalent of you know the the island nation off to where the elves live, Elf Britain. <laughs> oh God, they're like, oh no, God, English elves. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, what? What? Well, I'm like so snooty about the tea, probably. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone, everyone, stop! Everyone, stop! Everyone, stop! You're huh? <laughs> the Elktic peoples. Yeah. Fucking, can you imagine Gaelic elvish? No. Oh, there's just apostrophes. It's, well, I mean, that's, what's, <laughs> that's what Cinderin looks like anyway, is apostrophes and underscores. It's just apostrophes. <sighs> okay. Um, I, don't, I don't have a good name for... I, uh, I'm, I'm finding myself more countries. partial to the south than to the north. Like, And I imagine the fight is a little more desperate down there yeah i kind of dig that especially if you're like a savior coming to help i mean or that's where i'm from and that's where i was stealing food to feed people it it sucks harder down there right there's there are fewer people everything it was bad um there's an inquisition that's like not there's with like auto (laughs) defaze and people getting their taken out of their homes and shit like that i was gonna ask about that because like when the plagues came through like there was a stiff uptick in the power of the church and like witch hunts and things and I imagine similar in that the 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 imperial because the south is where the imperial cult is the strongest right? No. North. Oh it's the opposite. Back right down. so the south they are actively purging um, deistic so, worship. So, so take like American religiosity and invert it. Okay. Okay. Oh, the so South here, is not religious at all. In the five E world building doc under um, the God section, uh, the South is in the middle of the Inquisition. Worship of any deities outside of the divinely sanctioned empire at Odolf II and his forebears is strictly forbidden. Uh, it is taught, though, that it is right to give them to give. While it is taught that it is right to give them thanks and praise, it's also said that Ash and their spiritual and their successor saints were mortal, divinely inspired, but mortal nonetheless. Placing faith in gods is therefore deemed sacrilege, as mortals have the power within themselves to save each other and therefore the world. Uh, great fighters, investor, inventors, and wizards deserve your praise. Dead gods do not. And I mean that kind of fits with my character being agnostic because, like, maybe I don't know what gods there are. And so, like, that's like because I part of this character concept is that I have no idea where divine magic in me came from. It just showed up one day, right? So, so there's a humanoidist inquisition. So, 
Sorry, you cut out for your second sentence there. Sorry. There's a humanoidist inquisition in the south. They are hunting all and purging them with the idea that we should be lauding humans and humanoid creatures that exist and are doing good rather than I'm understanding this. Yes. Okay. So like um uh in the south they don't take Ash's name in vain seriously, like they're not saying Ash protect me, right? Uh Ash's they're not saying Ashley protect me. They would say like, you know, they they'd say it with a roll of the eyes sort of thing. And you know, not super loudly because the Inquisition might be around the corner and mistake what you said. But it might be like a sarcastic like punchline or like right. hey, I made dinner. Oh, Ash protect me. <laughs> I, I burnt my mouth. I see that Ash wasn't protecting me this time. <laughs> Laugh track. Yeah. <laughs> I have to kill a lot of these people before I get this. This is going to be great. <laughs> but I mean, St. Rona was clearly a mortal person. She lived, she died, That's she did true. no wrong. Right. That's no true. wrong whatsoever. Also, I love the phrase successor saints. Yeah. She's Rona, not Ranga. <laughs> Feel bad. I have I have no idea. So Yorha is apparently an in joke from the Rona thing. Near, near. Okay. The organization in Near is called Yorha. Gotcha. I uh, I didn't have to go far to get that answer. No. Um, and Rona is just Jordan's character who was a horrible person. <laughs> it's my ranger from the dungeon. She was a hunter okay. that got team killed and brought back as a vampire, and is basically <laughs> dating death now, and they're pretty serious. Okay. Okay. Which you know when you say it out loud like that, it just sounds weird. (laughs) No, that sounds like a comic book. It sounds great. Yeah, it's it's Thanosian. Yeah. All right. So um, I I added the Inquisition uh, as a faction. So we've got the Ash Wardens, uh, the Empire Dogs of War slash War Boys. Thanks, Aaron. Mm -hmm. Uh, Rot Cultists uh, and the Inquisition. I'm sure more factions will pop up, like. there's probably like a counter to the Inquisition, like people that are like quietly practicing some sort of uh, imperial cults. Yeah, I really like thing. the inevitable decline as a name for a group. Yeah, I I was kind of it it popped into my head, and I wanted to write it down before I forgot it. That that is that is the key to all things is writing it down before you forget it. Yes. Also, the inevitable decline is just flashing me back to my no effects days. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, no effects was a band. They released an album called The Decline, which was a single 18-minute song. Nice. Brilliant. I okay. I've heard of them. I and I think I've heard probably a, a couple songs, but I'm not super familiar. They put out another album called White Trash, Two Hebes, and a Bean. Oh. Because one of them was white trash, two of them were <laughs> Jewish, and the last one is Hispanic. Great. That's All right, you've talked about these guys before. I remember that's that. So good. All right, so um, but the nineties were weird. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we have broad strokes for um a significant number of factions at this point. Uh, we're taking place in the south. Uh, we know we've got the uh, guards or war folk loyal to the empire. We've got the folks that are supposed to be loyal to carrying the rot, not polite. Rot. Um, we've got the Inquisition, we've got Rot cultists, and we've got uh, an Imperial cult slash religious folks in the South. Uh, so it's not cult in the... I, I found this out recently, that the phrase Imperial cult does not mean cult in the cult sense of the word, but cult is in a group of people who are who are religious towards the thing. Huh. Yeah. Uh, folk who follow the religion of... Uh, authority essentially so um next up let's identify player characters uh, we have a lot of these names down here um but so for this exercise um none of these are here so the first player is going to describe the character gives them a general role motivation problem or problems they frequently face uh characters need to be proactive not passive uh like you know your response to chaos isn't going to be like fleeing and screaming into the night it needs to be like grabbing the sword or a book or a thing and do something about it. It's um, very West Wing. You run into the fire. Right. Uh, and then uh, the next player will do the same thing. Describe your character. Uh, 
what's your role, motivation, a problem that's more problems you frequently face, and uh, a tie that binds you to the player that went first. Uh, and we're going to go around and make sure that everybody has at least one tie with another character. Um, and if you don't, then we did something wrong and we're going to do it till we do. Do the thing. All right. I do so, the uh, thing. Roll to it. Roll to roll thing. D, roll d20. Roll, <laughs> oh, unless you have advantage. Let's just roll 2d20. Oh, 18. I have a, uh, no, that's a 12. Yeah. I mean, 12 is, is better than average, so it's effectively a success in D&D. &D. Yeah, I, I saved. <laughs> I saved against not going first? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You still got to go. You ah. saved into going first. Oh, okay. All right, so um, Sernrathi does not have a link in their name, so I'm assuming that you don't have thing to the thing. I have a character sheet in roll 20. Great. Um, so we would like to know from Sernrathi... I think this is an H3. Yeah, it's going to be an H4 here if we're heading bow. Uh, um, we need, like, a... Um, a high bowl. aspect? Motivation, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm... I think, like, the high aspect is newly minted agnostic messiah. So let me just put that in there. Oh, okay. You can do it. Okay. High cost. Uh, newly minted agnostic messiah. And I think like there's a question mark in there. Um, motivation is to see the world saved from rot. Um, and part of the problem is I th think I think I have that thing that like um, basically can't say no to someone in help. I think Senrathi genuinely believes that, like, I mean, kind of the Spider-Man thing, right? Like, with great power comes great responsibility. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I've got divine magic. Apparently not too many other people do, if anyone. I've certainly never met them. So, I mean, in addition to throwing fireballs around, I gotta save people. Awesome. Okay. And I'm going to go get a beer. Um, sorry, I I must have tuned out or something. But high aspect meaning. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to that that RPG bleed podcast. Um, high aspect is a concept from the Fate role playing game where okay, it's basically. I'm not familiar at all. To just say the thing that you are in a like eight word sentence. Way. What's what's your character's elevator pitch? Yeah. Pixie go potty. So if <laughs> for sorry, <laughs> <laughs> that is the best high concept Holy right there. Shit, that is Eric. Amazing. High no, we, my dog needs to pee before it starts raining again. We we tried that character that was Chuck the fairy barbarian. <laughs> Pixie go potty. God damn it! I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh. so like i mean oh, stuff yeah. for bachelor might be like bodyguard to the blah 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 or whatever yeah right? uh, i was going to say she was like for the time being like senrathi's bodyguard or something um w would or... senrathi allow a bodyguard if not because that's an excellent <laughs> we've already done this too yeah oh, i mean like we are just yeah. three note <laughs> wasn't didn't wasn't that part of our dungeon world thing? Was was Bill every was, Mike, yeah, and Mike and Bobby were, were yeah. basically yeah. bodyguarding each other <laughs> to death? Yeah, and also we did that in uh, the last campaign we just finished for Monster of the Week, where hi, um, mm. yeah, it's it it's a I'm not it's sure a good if hook. It's, I'm not sure if it's a widespread. It's um, strong. It's a good good yeah, hook. It's not a widespread trope, but it's definitely one that we have adopted and I think run with and it's good. So friggin' do it. And I mean like one of like the Bill and I've forgotten Rook. Mike's character's name. Rook. Rook. Bill and Ted. Rook were like Ted. Yeah. It was Ted now. They really should have been. Um Rook. but yeah, Bill and Rook were like 
I can't trust you to keep yourself alive, so I'm going to put myself in danger to save you. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas, like, the cat was just like, um, church is important in the final battle with capitals on those words. So, yeah, I don't, I don't think Bash is that fervent about <laughs> just doing it in general. Um, you know, if not, then she just uses her sword arm elsewhere. Um, so, um, the idea behind having a high concept, a motivation, and a problem or problems, plural, uh, a high concept is how you see the character. Um, for example, like uh, Superman's high concept is um, uh, defender of truth, justice, in the American way. Right? His motivation is to um, is like to learn what it is to be human, but also like to show humanity that. Mm -hmm what it's like to be a paragon and in his problems or problems is one is he's he's better human than every other human on the planet so i mean like for vashla like if you're more mercenary than the rest of us it could just be like hyper competent mercenary currently bodyguarding yeah i mean that was that was what i had in mind i mean she's kind of like this jack of all trades adventurer who's been traveling for a couple of years trying to like so is it maybe like adventurer turned mercenary she kind of switches it up from time to time like she adventurer used to turned mercenary turned bodyguard yeah just to show like that you keep changing your hats mm. so i mean is it like um uh like do you is it that uh you know are you a murder hobo right no. is your do you just like <laughs> killing the folk so, like, you know in Dungeon World how you have, like, the alignment bits, like, the good yeah. or the evil, and that tells you, like, how, like that sort of thing can play in real strongly here, too, right? Like, it's, like, it's my high concept. One, defeating a worthy foe. Just so you're driven to find a stronger and stronger opponent. She wants to challenge herself to be the best for her that she Like, no one ever be. was? Fuck. the fuck? <laughs> You win this round. To bodyguard them is my real test. To train them is my cause. <laughs> to not lose them is my cause. D d does Sinrathi accept a bodyguard? Yeah. Okay. I mean, so, so much as like a strong sword arm and a pile of meat is more useful than I mean, robes. It, it could even be Sinrathi didn't originally want a bodyguard, but Yoraha kept saying, hey, we should bring her with us because, like, I knew her grandmother or something. I don't so, carry weapons. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I still got to dig into this motivation because I, I got to hear how your text. Like, are you, like, more dwarven slayer from the Warhammer franchise where you just lustfully throw yourself into battle trying to kill and when you, one day you're going to die and that's okay? Or are you, well, you're throwing herself up and down. What's up? Do you have a green mohawk? No. Just a giant green mohawk? They're red. Not the troll slayers. Uh, they they, okay. they change colors, right? <laughs> what you're Depending willing to die killing? Slayer's killer, mood, right? So it's you're mood, not a mood mohawk. You're not. You don't have a death wish, but you're you're looking mm -hmm. to get the actual like the you're hunting the most dangerous prey, right? Like, are you more fisherman or big game hunter? Um, probably probably fisherman. Like okay. she's. She's she's more into being like kind of practical and uh, accomplishing stuff, but like not in a really reckless, stupid way. Okay. Okay. That's why I'm going with like the protection. Uh... <laughs> so you're competent. You're professional. You yes. don't have like a death wish. No. Um, your goal is to is not to to fell the mightiest foe so much as to um, just to find a worthy opponent. Okay. Is it like forward always? Um. Yeah. I mean, I was kind of thinking she came from kind of like a family whose traditions were have a list of achievements. You know? Is it living up to and possibly exceeding mum? Yes. Yes. 
I really like fate. <laughs> so I, I just threw Dwarven Bodyguard looking in the shadow of her divine mother. I don't literally mean divine, but like, I feel that punchy. Yeah, like, somebody who's really awesome, right? Like, right. Yeah. Our divinities are Lord Ash, who came from the heavens and smote demons. Right. And then the philosophers of our day, apparently, in the South. So, I, and I'm just type, type, type. Oh, you don't, you're don't. you not looking at the document, so you can't see it. But um, So I, I threw down for your high concept, uh, Dwarven Bodyguard living in the shadow of her divine mother. Um, and for motivation, find where the opponents quote, not period, defeat them, period, make mom proud. Uh, what is, what keeps you from, what's getting in your way? Like, what is it that stops you from just retiring uh, a happy dwarf? You know, like, I've successfully got that, you know. My, my life is complete. I found a pretty worthy, pretty pretty strong enemy. I defeated them. I've got a decent amount of gold. I'm going to go mm. make... And and part of that is also going to be like your tragic flaw. Mm. Like you're either going to have to give up this vice so you can retire, or it will kill you. Like, um, Aaron's Kate is clearly driven by the blood of the innocent. Mm -hmm. uh, and if uh, the burb does not bathe uh, and like the burbs do uh, in uh... <laughs> the bird bloodbath right whoa uh, whoa 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 we're walking way off in another direction no sir <laughs> <laughs> bird bath and beyond yes fuck so so what is it what is it that that's that stops Vashla from doing the thing that she wants to do um, is she a drinker? I was gonna say maybe there's like a family debt now with how maybe she's from the south and like there was something lost. Ooh. Uh, and her family moved north like a generation or two ago. Well, like I'm, I'm gonna punch this shit way up to eleven, right? Like, cool. Um, like let's say like your entire uh what is the dwarven group in Dragon Age called? Like a like a like a like a clan? A clan. Oh character. no, it's a, a, a cast. Yeah. Like hold. God damn it, that's gonna bother me. Ty because it's, it's an Ty, Ty, it's oh, an amazing yeah. word. That is an amazing word. Like you're Ty and all its riches, uh that like that your mom was like the the Ty owner of paragon fell paragon fell to the blight right mm -hmm. shit uh right <laughs> <laughs> right uh so like your problem is is recovering uh all of your ancestors like the unimaginable task of of finding everything that was lost for your entire clan yeah. and getting it back to where it fucking belongs retrieve the silverware well, no, it's like every fucking fork will be, like, found, recast if need be, from whatever silver has been, like, melted down into another form, and then put back in, like, Granny's ancestral cutlery drawer that is in her tomb. Well, I was thinking, um... Are you a princess? No, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Princess, um, bodyguard, and new well, Jesus <laughs> adventures. No, yeah. I probably try to keep that like on the down low or whatever. Uh, like, uh, but Sinrathi um, knows. No, I'm probably actually really annoyed by Yorha. I like, I totally call you my lady. Because Yorha knows where you came from, yes. right? Yeah. <laughs> Yorha fought with your Yorha fought with your granny, apparently. Yeah. Um, the yeah. So here's the question: Are you a Southron princess? Yeah, like, I mean, that's. I was saying that my family's from the south, but like. Okay, so yeah, you got a lot of stuff to put back together, huh? Yeah, but like, I grew up very practical. I mean, even for a dwarf, like I mended my, all my own weapons and everything. Like I defended people who, you know, are. So, 
is that weird for dwarves or do they like exemplify lead by example? They do. Um, I, I was going to say the stuff that's lost is maybe um, a special weapon from each like paragon or just like matriarch oh. or patriarch. That um, is a very good way to get magic items out of a DM. I commend you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also, um, since my fighter can basically have and use all of the weapons, it's like, sure, I will, yeah, I'm, I'm totally proficient at this thing I just picked up. I've right. got mom's hammer and grandma's great axe and weird uncle Frank's, like, harpoon right. gun. And, and we'll, we will shamelessly steer that from Final Fantasy XV because that was an <laughs> Interesting. I've got Gladiolus's abs. I just equip those when I need them. Yeah, I would totally, I would totally have Gladiolus's abs equipped at all times. And I would wear a jacket that was way too small and only and way to... too open. One of those lady uh, sweaters that only comes down right past your chest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah keep I, your arms warm. I would, I would, yes, I would wear that every day. Um, I'm opening a beer, so if it looks like I'm staring at my navel, I had abs. Beer. If it looks like I'm staring at my navel, well, you're not too far off. <laughs> Mike. Cheers. Cheers. Okay, so Wait, we've got... Um... I'm Saki. I'll be right back. Oh, yeah, and you don't have work tomorrow. I was like, yeah, that seems no like day. a good way to end a night. No day. Wow. Yeah. Snow day in Louisiana. Well, there will be no snow. I mean, listen, I, I understand it. Okay, and your connection to mm -hmm. Senrafi. Bodyguard. Bodyguard to, I'm going to put the stars in quotes with a rolling eye afterwards. Mm -hmm. I mean, I probably accepted it, but, like, I don't treat you as anything less. Uh -huh. Like, I, 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 I imagine this character is actually very humble, despite having an 18 charisma or whatever bullshit yeah, I Yeah, I mean, I, mean I'm pr I probably wouldn't be able to put up with that otherwise. Um, but I have, I kind of got the impression that, you know, like, your has, like, like, teamed up with you. It was like, get that one. Like that one for oh, yeah. uh, a bodyguard. Um, Your head definitely would have lied to get you into this position. Yeah, I think Zach was saying that your head like had like a squire, and is probably going to try being like a mentor. Oh God! <laughs> so my my connection to Vashla, since you're not reading the thing, is uh, I trained Nana Stormforge. So you're going to constantly refer to, like, her honored ancestor as, like, Athy or something. And she's going to be like, who the... Oh, my God, you mean, like, great-grandmother, the queen, and, like, may she mm -hmm. rest in peace because, oh, like... Well, yeah. Right. She oh, once drank like four entire food barrels food. of ale and bedded half the Imperial Regiment. Yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Not necessarily true, but... Yeah, she went on to big things after I was gone, but, but I remember her beginnings. <laughs> So uh, that's it for for Vashla, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's so. I just want to say I love this group and I love what we do to games. <clears throat> so uh, moving <laughs> onwards, uh, tell me more about Gate Guardian Yorha because it looks like you've got a couple paragraphs here. All right. Uh, well, mostly it's just uh, Yorha is a a part of a religious sect that apparently no longer exists. Uh, that um, were warriors they basically put in cold storage and then rezzed when they needed to bring them back out to fight something. Um, and I just well, want to stress, like, there's a mechanical reason for that as yes, well. Yes, yes. This came cool. from the new barbarian build ability. I mean, to be rezzed for no material component costs. Um, so... What? 
Yeah. That's awesome. Die. So it lot. just costs the spell slot. Um. Uh, that and when I saw that, I'm like, I can be as awesome as I want to be right now. Like, I will literally dive through the air and stab a dragon. Like, I will do these things. Um, and all I have to do is have a teammate there with a res handy, and it's good. Um, so yeah, so I am sort of, I am a, a relic of an older time, and I don't know whether, I don't think we ever really decided, although it sounds like I probably lost a lot of, like, my raw character power on this particular res. If I am, like, the guy who trained, who trained Vashla's grandma and possibly fought alongside the Lord Ash. Um, I don't know if we've cleared that up. You like the worst power tease in, in a video game? Yeah. yeah. Start off as Darth Vader and then... Oh, nope, sorry. Yeah, you're 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 Samus at the start of a game, and then like we have rezzed you just at like right at the start of the tutorial. Yep. We've done the cold open. You have just killed Ridley. Ridley has presumably killed you. Right. <laughs> yes. Um like the so prologue yeah. is probably your head dying valiantly. Getting Dude, shot dying. in the back due to a black box a reaction. <laughs> I, I just the, know. Sorry. Is is the dragon thing still canon that you brought up? Like, <laughs> That's a really good question, actually, because it makes more sense this way, um, at least with your ha under these conditions. Where uh, I don't know if you guys, some of you weren't here. I rolled up my backstory just to, with the Xanathar's guy just to see how it went, and it turned out I was married to a silver dragon at one point. That's not the words you chose. <laughs> Word I, I chose like, like boy toy for a silver or, or like you know something some sort uh, yeah, of yeah. There we go. I was consort to call. silver dragon. Boy toy named Roy used to live in. Um, Mike, Mike, can feel free to run with that, I suppose. Um. Uh, yeah. So that's and we haven't really fleshed out a ton of what my old order was. I was going to kind of leave that. Uh, for future reveals, if it becomes, or if if enough exists for it to ever be resurrected, if those, if my fellow members are still there to be brought back, all that stuff, I was going to kind of leave in Mike's hands, um, um, use as he wanted. So, the the question for me is going to be, um, are you coming back? Were you part of the Ashen Order? Uh, it, or it, it, are you cool with being part of what was either the, do you want to be like the precursor to like, are you ancient or you are you old? It'd be super old if I'm like, we'd have to set Nana, uh, Nana Stormforge back a ways. If like I'm you've super, been resurrected super... a lot. True. That's true. Like, right. Thing that I was thinking about earlier, because we were talking uh, before the show, uh, Jordan and Adam and I were talking about uh, like the heights on characters uh, on species, the random tables, and how weird it is that D and D does that. And I was thinking, well, what can my character's physical traits say about him? Like, do I kind of look like a Neanderthal? Like, am I that far back? Right. Well, I mean, we don't have any other humans in the party, but presumably they exist elsewhere. And that's the other thing is we could just not have any humans, but that's a pretty big step. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think, they, I think there think... could be southern humans that just don't exist anymore, right? I mean, eighty percent of the population died. <laughs> right. Like that's that's a stupefying quantity. Like maybe humans proved extra susceptible. Maybe the primarily human settlements were like the first hit, or maybe the humans were more cowardly and were the first to flee. Like, you could be the only human in the South. Down with that. I mean, it, we don't have to have everybody be, like... The the most of a thing, right? Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be the, the one... the one. On the other hand, this is already very Dragon Age, so maybe everyone <laughs> is the most X. Right. And if we want to take that... What is the thing from 13th Age? The... 
one unique thing. One unique thing. One unique thing, right? Like that. That's that's a strong mechanic too. And it's a high got, aspect. Right. Aspect. Which we've already got that. So yeah, I mean, I, I don't. It, the, that's more of a question for you. Um, if you want to be ancient, that's fine. That's totally a thing that I can work with. If you want to merely be old, that's fine too. And that's. But like. It raises questions about the divinity of Ashley if you're ancient or you were a compatriot slash maybe an Ashley yourself if you're just merely old. Oh, man. That was really interesting, actually. Ancient Yurha fucking slinging guns? That's pretty good. I mean, we can put a pin in that. Like, I don't know that we right. necessarily we don't, we don't need to answer to that tonight. Now. Yeah. That's definitely, yeah, that's the thing that we can sort of... I don't even know if I would know how old I am relative That's, yeah. to how much do you retain with the like trauma of first death and then rebirth, <laughs> presumably after some like soul bullshit in Valhalla or heaven or both. And not not just once, but presumably at this point dozens of times. There was no pain, no fear, no doubt, till they pulled me out. I think okay. I was in heaven. Okay. Yep. That's so... Oh, I love that Buffy episode. Go watch Buffy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stop watching this garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Will you stop? <laughs> Every time you do that, someone quits the stream. No, we're still good. Actually, we're up from the last time I said that, so... Oh, my stream stopped. Okay. Um, I think I I would... Personally, like, because it's this is a world with guns, yeah, and like these sorts of things, and I have none of that. That's just not a thing I'm going to be doing. Probably, like, I can I can believe that, like, even if I wasn't one of the first members of the Order of Rona, Saint Rona, like, I'm old enough that like plate armor didn't exist at the time, and I have never well, learned to use it. I mean, the good well, news is it's going out of style again, so. I was going to say another thing to consider is, like, if you do forget a lot of shit between lives, like, what does a gun-wielding barbarian look like, and how close is it to a Grammaton priest? Let the record show that I have rendered Zach speechless. No, well, no, no, he, he has spoken through several, several nods. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, oh, shit, I, he's I'm got currently... a puppy. Get him, get him, get him. <laughs> I'm currently uh, Googling Gun Barbarian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, we've, got, not gonna lie. Uh, we've got a lot of good stuff out of, out of, out of the, the Zed at the moment. Uh, we've got um, uh, anachronistic whole revenant holy warrior for one line description that every single one of those letters, words, <laughs> except for warrior, is like infused with plot hooks and deliciousness. Like that is a great example of... Uh, uh, an aspect being in fuego, high concept, still out of time. Same thing, right? Motivation: we're on a mission from God. Bonus for callback to Blues Brothers. Uh, problem or problems plural? I must restore the order, then the world, and I will die trying as many times as necessary. That's Both, hacked up. All very good. Yes. Uh, connection to Vashla, I trained trained Nana Stormforge. Connection to Senrathi, they are a means through which the gods may act and the world may be healed. I mean, you set a high target, and I would like to live up to it. <laughs> um, did we ever decide? Did you ever decide if Sinrathi was gendered in any way, or male or female? I haven't caught I, it. I haven't figured yeah. out gender yet. I honestly like they're they in my head right now, and it might stick that way, but I don't know. Works for me. I just want to make sure I was getting it properly up here. <laughs> yeah. Also, I, I am watching uh, Adam type out Fitz's information and and gleefully watching those get typed out. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I love, I adore this sort of character creation and what it does for the world and all that stuff. So, yeah. I mean, it turns out that Evil Hat Productions have good ideas when it comes to tabletop role-playing games. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of which, if you have not played Blades in the Dark, uh, go check out their OGL. Solid. It's the solidest open gaming license you can have because it just means you got to give them credit. Uh, also, check out 
Oh yeah, Blades in the Dark is very good. Also, check out Dresden mm-hmm. Files Accelerated because and, Fates. Yeah. and Fate Accelerated, and I mean, it's like Fate, Fate but quicker. Dresden yeah. Files Accelerated may be like the single best game I've ever played. Like that is just it's so well put together and it does the thing it does so well. And there's nothing extraneous. No, it's 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 lean. It's a lean game, and it does and like strong. customized options very very well. We built an invulnerable. I wanted to be a foo dog next, but my character wouldn't die. <laughs> we couldn't kill the old wizard. We couldn't do it. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna head on down to Fitz because uh, I think that's that's pretty much everything we know. You are all right. And I will be filling in connections to the other characters uh, as they come, but I wanted to hear more about them first so I can be as intrusive as possible. Right, and and you don't absolutely have to have a connection to every character if you don't want, but you need at least one connection to another character so that it makes sense when you all do the epic team-up maneuver. Three that have already gone are kind of specifically intertwined so i want to make sure that one of us links back to these two okay, i mean cool. kate already clearly links back strongly well actually your hand was yeah. up yeah i was gonna say um i was doing a bunch of other stuff before i became a mercenary one of the things i had in mind was working as a smith oh, yeah. i probably worked with fritz in some capacity yeah So yeah, I guess. Um, so yeah, Fritz was my uh, artificer with a gunsmith specialization. Um, so far, though, the only one-line description I can think of is a tiny tinker tank. But um, that is that is great. It is alliterative <laughs> and descriptive. Uh, mainly because it's kind of. I can only imagine how stupid this looks in reality. Well, in, in the game reality, where it's this. How tall am I? Like a three foot gnome? Yeah. Uh, wearing scale mail and has a two handed boom cannon or, you know, a so pistol. Water bus? You have a ye desert old, eagle. Ye old bazooka. Yeah. <laughs> like, I have, I, I imagine his armor has built in, uh, like, bipod that can handle the recoil for this thing. Do you have a noob tube? That he has to deploy before firing. I mean, are, effectively for him, yeah. Yeah. Are Are you familiar with the Glitter Boy? I oh, yes. I, I I am. I've never played Rest, but I am familiar familiar with. Yeah. That, yeah. So you have like the pylons that deploy to keep yourself from from flying backwards when you fire. Yeah. So yeah. So I imagine he just rolls around with his tiny little tank, uh, cannon and all. But he's not really, you know, he, he was never intended to be a fighter, for sure. He he, he loves his, his craftsmanship. Um, that's why he made sure that if he has to go out and, and, you know, interface with dangerous things, he can't get hurt. I don't know. Um, the high concept right now is an explosive journeyman engineer. Uh, basically keeping after his namesake. Um, things he tries to do don't always work in the uh, most fantastic way. Uh, Kurt motivation is to perfect his trade no matter what may be in his way. Um, I know there is currently forbidden tech when it comes to certain weapons. At least in the... uh, There was a blurb in the game conceits. Yeah. Yeah, there is. You can't make a traveling uh, clothes cannon without the proper licenses. Well, you have to have a divine mandate. Uh, oh, sorry, an imperial cult mandate. Yeah. Oh, to, be able to, to be able to touch revolvers. Oh. So yeah, the, the concept of having, uh, you know, non, or, you know, a, a magazine to a gun or something, or having be able to fire more than one shot, I'm guessing is what they're hoarding. Um, so like if Fritz's problem is that uh, he's never going to give up trying to find better gun tech which will inevitably put him on a collision course with the entire fucking empire alright that's pretty problematic yeah that that is um, 
kind of where I was going with the problem that the motivation and problem were sort of, you know, hand in hand. Um, right. He's, he's not going to let an imperial mandate stop him from developing better technology. I pictured him making like some sort of shield thing, like just um, something that he activates, and it's basically like a gnome-sized hamster ball. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super interested to see the like Fritz Oppenheimer moment, where something goes horribly wrong with one of the inventions, and it's oh my god, what have I done? I've armed the enemy with easy to produce. <laughs> Lightsabers. Right. <laughs> Lightsabers. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. 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 be playing the role oh, of Jonathan. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah no, that thinking. was me. Well, I definitely gave lightsaber tech to the Republic. I mean, I Old could was... you know, make the, the, what was it, the fuel? Yeah. The infinite yeah. energy machine. <laughs> yeah. God. Petrol fuel engine. We'll just leave that under my bed at the Sith home planet. <laughs> We ruined that universe, man. It's gone now. It's a good thing that galaxy is far, far away from us. True. <laughs> not, you're not thinking with portals. <laughs> it's also far removed in time. So really, you're just tell it's a documentary on what did happen. Still well, so I mean, portals. so what's going to happen is we're going to see the light from the supernova caused by Jonathan's fuel extraction machine any day now. <laughs> Easing. I guess I need to make at least one connection. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Vashla is the easy one for now. Um, okay. Can... Your your problem is currently. I want fancy gun tech, and I do not give a shit about your laws until we figure out something better. <laughs> it's good for now. Yeah. <laughs> It's actually really cool too. It's go ahead, call the cops. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Boom. All right, what's your connection to uh, Yorha or Vashla? I think Vashla, Vashla um, trained me as part of my apprenticeship. Probably. In smithing. Okay. I probably even encouraged you to go out and into fights or something, at least self-defense of some sort. Is train in scare quotes? Because Fritz is probably <laughs> undoubtedly the better mechanic at this point. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that his his passion took him deeper into the, the crafting, you know, you know, engineering world that Vashla really didn't put her passion towards necessarily. Because, yeah. I mean, especially because, like, my thing was like, oh, I want to try a thing. Okay, cool. I want to try a different thing now. I imagine you have this like intricate gold studded bracelet and it's just what would mom do? <laughs> but that that's actually oh, a nice God. question for Fritz. Like, do you have a masterpiece? Like how do you know when you graduated from uh gunsmith school? Um I think right now he I, the, the the easy Way to say it is that he could make a gun that can get rid of the rot. Cool. So a flamethrower. No, okay. <laughs> rot gun is pretty cool. <laughs> gun that shoots rot concept. Tech. Double barreled rot gun. Cool. Yeah, I like it. So does Kate use a bow or does she use a gun? Longbow. Okay. I was wondering, is there going to be some sort of like argument between the two on which is more? Yes. Probably while arguing, I'm just going to like pull and fire and like shoot something at 200 yards. <laughs> um, it's very Legolas. You're a halfling? No, a bird and a no. <laughs> well, yeah, but I... Uh... Uh, so, Maul? Yeah. The character. Those are too big for you. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, Mike. Uh, for the longbow, it says it's heavy, so small characters can't use it at a disadvantage. Could I swap the longbow out with a shortbow? 
Why are you a small? Because I'm a halfling. Uh, flavored to be a bird person. Mm. I think there is a like there is a bird person in one of the books. I didn't see one. Is the problem? Uh, so I have one in the, hold on, let me do. Let me look D&D up other five e or Kokra. Dear my. Oh yeah, there's that for sure. And they like have um they have a fly speed which is kind of busted for you know level anything below eight. Where is this? Because I'm not seeing it. Monsters Manual, page 12, has Eric. Oh, Monster Manual 12. Oh, okay, please hold. Um, That'll have to, I'll have to re jigger uh, all my so stuff in that case, because I really like the halfling number. stuff, though. Like, it's real good. Eric Okra, you your deck increases by stuff. two and wisdom by one. What, what else does the halfling stuff do? Uh, so it's two dexterity. Um, yep. I get... Nimbleness, where I can move through a space of any creature that's my uh, that's larger than me. Mm-hmm. Uh, anytime I roll a one, I can re-roll it. Uh, advantage oh, on saving lucky. throws against being frightened and naturally mm-hmm. stealthy. You can attempt to hide even when you're only obscured by a creature that is at least one size larger than you. Okay, I just I just pasted in chat the link to the D and D Beyond Eric Okra. What page was it in the Monster Manual, Mike? Like twelve, but it's just the monster object. Oh. They they are a medium creature. Okay. Despite being about five feet tall, they have thin, lightweight bodies that weigh between eighty and one hundred pounds. Because burb. Okay, let me see. God, there's so many words. Mm-hmm. All the way down at the bottom. Just scroll. Yeah, all I'm, way I'm down. doing that. Okay, dex by two, whiz by one. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna swap some stuff out then. Uh, yeah. They have a fifty foot fly speed, which is kind I'm of gonna, that's nuts. Yeah. I, f- I feel like I'm just gonna not do that part. Essentially, to use the um, speed, you can't be wearing medium or heavy. But he's a ranger, or she's a ranger, so she won't be anyway, right? Yeah. Right. Are are you? Is this the D and D three five? It's a mithril breastplate, so it's light armor. Yeah. Or that's not how I roll. I mean, I mean the, have... we, we're just we're going to employ the social contract that apparently Genesis explicitly states, like. There is a social contract. You're all players sitting at a table with each other. Don't Maybe be, don't be assholes. Don't um, be a dick. Yeah. So let's um, not be assholes um, and just don't abuse the fly speed and we're fine. And, and, and if you do, I'm just going to shoot you once and you're yeah. falling around. <laughs> and... I will say this. I will say this. Other than the ability to use a longbow and other than other than the ability to use a longbow, basically, this is going to be way less cool than the halfling if you're not flying yeah. all the time. Yeah, see, I think oh. I, I, th- I think I want to stick with halfling if I can, Mike. So, are your wings just bandaged? bandaged and that's why you can't fly? Ooh, did your wings rot? That way they're rotting. Yeah. Shit, yes, my wings rotted off. That's why my that's whole amazing. back's fucked up. Yes. And That's fucking dark. Maybe I've had it to the point where, like, it's... Battle. It's... Not shrinking me, but like I'm withering, withered a little. Yeah, I'm shitty. I'm shitty on the inside. Do other well? Do other bird people? Are you have a, a like? Well, do right. they have a word for you? Like, what is a bird that doesn't fly? That's kind of it's kind of, of, it's kind of an existential yeah. question that Kate has been asking herself, there, buddy. Right. I feel like uh, Am I still bird? Bird? there was a there's a character whose whole point was they were a bird who'd lost their wings. Uh, yeah, that there. was the movie oh. called Dogma, I think. Also oh, that. Also Smith? that. Oh, you know what? Okay, so I've named him, I've named him Avix, the, the, the species, so that's just kinda of what I'm gonna go with for now. Okay. So they all live way high in real high up trees. In and, the yellow submarine. And they never bothered with ladders and shit because they can all fly. So my wings coming off mean back. I can never go back home. I went to avenge like, my, my family. I got the rot and rope. I can never go back. You, you're a sweet little baby bird that got pushed out of the nest too young and you can't fly. Now you're stuck on the ground with all these predators. It is, it is. Basically. And then I learned how to shoot a bow. <laughs> well, I imagine so, like, they I'm... shoot bows. <laughs> I'm gonna have to go all how to train a dragon on this and build him a set of build your set of wings. I was gonna say, is is there is there a desire within Kate to <laughs> how do you feel about 
possible explosions. Fr- Fritz's aspect for Kaith is, I will make you whole again. Fuck. <laughs> Not, no, I can show you the world? Fritz wants to build a jetpack. <laughs> yep. I'd say it's going to be a jetpack. Thank you. Oh. Are you, like, how wet are you to that longbow? What? How wet? Wet I thought you said, you? how wet are you to the longbow? I was yeah, like, Mike, that's what are you to me? That gets back into things that we're not going to talk about. Because <laughs> yeah. that's creepy for people. Yeah, no. Something to the list. That's, <laughs> that's it right there. Weapons <laughs> can be sentient, but not sexual. Got it. I was about to say I'm like a seven to nine on the moistness scale. <laughs> that is the, the weirdest superpower. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. I just want you all to know that. Cut. Internet hugs. <laughs> Moist I still, I still want to know where Mike was going Moist with the, the logbo thing, though. Yeah, I do too. Go to that. You... No, I meant wet is in like super attached to the idea. Right. Well, you're going to propose too. then. Pistols. Well, no, I... Yeah. It literally, all, like, there's an entire range of of weaponry out there. That, right. that, that you are call not it a gun range. Can I pitch? Can I pitch, uh, Keith? If you go into the fifth edition uh, Discord, there's a pair of pistols in here that look that have Ranger written all over them. Oh, the axe pistols. <laughs> Um, yep. excuse me, yep. I would like to change my weapon <laughs> to these. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, so it says you could have, uh, I have two simple weapons or, uh, you know, simple or martial, I think. You either get two short swords or, uh, so I want a hand axe gun and then I also want a spear gun. Is it a hand axe gun or is it a handgun axe? Really depends on what you're using it for, I think. I don't even know how the fuck. Would you bring a hand axe gun to a knife fight? <laughs> yes. I absolutely would. I would bring two. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, I've completely derailed this. Where were we and what are we doing? No, this is great. We're talking about uh, Kate. This is, and, and the reason I, I asked um, about. Uh, the the weaponry is because like yeah I mean there's like lots of good gunny sort of things yeah I'll have to I'll have to look through all that I just kind of figured out is that a mace gun that is a mace gun yes that is a mace gun no that is a mace you suka you pull the trigger if you want to hit somebody better. with a mace two hundred feet away <laughs> so what's the what's the deal with with ranger creation what do you mean what do you mean so you said something about um. Ranger SRD. Something well, about simple weapons? Like starting gear. Oh, so basically. yeah, my starting gear. You either get um, two short swords or you can choose two simple weapons. So I was going to take a hand axe and a spear so I'd have a little bit of versatility. Um, but I'm going to have to... I, I'm going to probably keep those and figure out a new a new ranged weapon. But anyway, yes. Yes. Oh, oh I see. Each of us gets your gear flow chart, right? Yeah. Where there's like this, these two options and then these it's, two options. And it's then. very Dungeon world which was smart, it is right? I mean, that's, yeah, that was a strong I, feature. I yeah, I don't. I think it was a very smart design choice. I just want to like you know, shouts to Dungeon World. Yeah, let's <laughs> let's, let's acknowledge where it came from, right? You, right. you yeah. got copied for Dungeons and Dragons. Good job. Solid. You're in Dungeons and Dragons. You didn't have to end your career by designing Dungeons and Dragons. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> ah. I mean, this it is... seems like Monty Cook is okay, and we figured... if he's okay, we have, fair. we have there's hope for all of us. We have figured out Yorha's ranged weapon, and it is a shade thrower. Clearly, <laughs> 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 mm. <clears throat> I have not had enough beer. Um, yeah, a musket's a 1d12 piercing two-handed weapon, so... Okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. Uh, and it's not heavy. Sweet. I guess the equivalent of a bladed crossbow, right? Like, is is what these are? Like, is there a hand crossbow anymore in 5th edition? I can't remember. No. There is. And uh, Really? Oh, yeah. So it's, it's right there. Um, and crossbows don't suck in this edition for some reason. Yeah, they're like, the heavy crossbow is the best um, 
ranged weapon. Ranged weapon, and it's cheaper. Yeah. Although I still really like Charles, my foppish longbow fighter. Nice. Diggity. It's a spear that's also a musket, so I named it a spusket. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, God damn it. It's, there's just a bayonet on the end of the musket, but let's, let's go, we'll go with it. Um, all right, uh, so let's talk about um, your uh, adjectives. Okay. Uh, loud, messy, close. Intimate. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> well, no, I don't want to pass this along to anybody. You know, like I, I'm really. That's no, that's fair. I'm Impulsive. About that. Um, um. Okay, so for my one line description, I put a uh, rot cursed ranger trying to atone for past sins. <laughs> Can I give you some absolution? <laughs> <laughs> he tells me worship in the bedroom. I really don't. <laughs> I don't know what I it means, really but don't. he keeps saying it, and it's really weirding me out. <laughs> um, so, yes, the high concept is uh, infested murderer seeking redemption. Uh, motivation is to balance the scales. Uh, one yes. second. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's roll back to the murderer part. Yeah, what? Yeah, what about it? No, I just like, yeah, let's talk about murderer for a bit. Okay, continue. How would you like, what, what, what a, ask me your questions and answers I will give. Um, ask not the villagers, for none of them live. Whoa! Uh, the women and the children, too? The women and the children, because I hate sand. It's dry and it gets everywhere. It's so um, icky! Sorry. Sand is actually my favorite character in Neverwinter Nights too. <laughs> Chaotic murder hobo. <laughs> no, it's neutral. Um, yeah, it's neutral. No, now. it's real not neutral. <laughs> so, uh, infested murderous, infested murderer seeking redemption. Okay. Um, did the rot? Force you to do it? Nope. I okay. got it. I got it from what I did. Murdering? Yes. <laughs> okay. So, um, some people came into town. Uh, one thing led to another. Um, half my family was killed. So, I went to go track this dude down, and then I kind of, um, killed everybody who I thought was harboring him, which was kind of most of the village. Um, and on the way back, I caught the rot. Or on the way there, I'm not sure. But by the time I got back home, uh, I could no longer get into heaven because my wings had rotted off. By the time you came back to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, this, if... this almost feels like, like Boy Named Sue just gender flipped. <laughs> I was boy. going to say, um, what if the last person you had you, with, that was on your kill list had the rot and they infected you because you had to kill them? Or From let's heart they stabbed at thee. Or like you don't know where you got the rot, and it's See, just no. Like that was the thing. It's like I now you're rotting after you killed all these people. I, I the last thing I remember from that day is like approaching the town and then I was outside of town covered in blood that wasn't mine and I'm not sure if like you can get the rot from sacrificing what makes you a person but I'm it, convinced it, that I can because of hideous this. suggestion yes so I mean like you know you murdered all these people but your memory seems fairly vague mm-hmm what if you woke up to me burning your wings off because they were rotting? Oh, yes. Ow. Wow. I woke. I wake up like <laughs> my my head like forcibly turned sideways so I don't drown like, in the muck. Like as, chicken. Well, yeah. I don't, so I don't drown in the muck as you just. I, I'm I'm gonna say that for you to be a murderer, you have to remember killing these people and that it was wrong. Okay. Because yeah. otherwise, you're yeah. just the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Well, part of it, part of it is my haunted thing. So yeah, I, I, I did it, 
and it was me that did it. And that's the part that scares me. So for my background, for my person, I picked a haunted one. And um, for my bond, it's, it's, there's evil in me. I can feel it. It must never be set free. I'm going to put again. I'm going to put again there. Yeah. I mean, can, I, can I ask a question real quick? Yeah. yeah. Just Avixes, is that, is that the species? Mm -hmm. Avix? Yeah. Do they normally interact with the people on the ground and, and or speak common languages with them? Um, like, did you walk into a village full of things that you thought of as people and kill them all? Or did you walk into a village full of things that you didn't think of as people and kill them all? And now you're like, oh, crap, I now have to get along with these people. Mm. And they are people. And I'm mm -hmm. learning that. I've, I, I think, yeah, maybe I didn't speak common then. I've I've learned it now because you know part of my redemption is I need to help everyone. <laughs> I accidentally a whole village, Mike. <laughs> what do? <laughs> oh, these monkeys are people and have language and culture. Think about that revelation. If you're just like a uh, happy go lucky <laughs> like bird person from the sky, and then you come down, and you're like, okay, well, we got to kill the infestation of monkeys. Clearly, I. <laughs> Yeah, I, I literally just point thought out they that, were below me. I want to just point out that me. Zach's character is named Yorha. And yet Kate is the one going through this arc. Yeah, it's... it's uh, <laughs> Yep. I'm the other Yorha that never learns. <laughs> oh. I also feel like there's some hideous, like... Longing, rusted, furnace, daybreak, 17, benign, 9, homecoming, 1, like winter soldier list or something. Uh... Like a wall with a bunch of names carved into them, like true names of other people like me. Oh, I forgot. Were we supposed to read um, Ideal's Bonds and Flaws earlier? I, I did that as part of character gen. I'm, I think... Can but I, I don't read think we've gone over if them. you want, Mike? Yeah, um, go for it. Okay, so uh, mine has a harrowing event, which is the start of my background. So uh, I did terrible things to avenge the murder of uh, people I loved. I became a monster and it haunts my waking dreams. Um, so for my personality trait, which I guess I worked into a problem on, uh, that other thing, uh, I refuse to become a victim and I will not allow others to be victimized. So, um, even if that gets me into hot water, which it has several, several times, I'm going to stand up for what I think is right. Um, ideals. I'm a monster that destroys other monsters and anything else that gets in my way. Hi, Angel. And bonds. There's evil in me. I can. I just. I get it now. Yeah. I can feel it. It must never be set free again. Yep. <laughs> yep. I, I. I can see it. Yep. Right there. Almost David Bertianas. Oh. I. I have to go. Look at the time. I have this effect on people. <laughs> I should go. <laughs> no, that's the other. Bioware series that we're not currently aping. <laughs> Unless we are secretly in the background, in which case I am wearing the right hoodie. Well, I did put like hexagons on the dragon. Kind of like the whole um, Omni tool uh, texture. I... I like it. You're going to have to look closer at that. It's in the. <clears throat> um, Google Drive shared folder. Nice. What you thinking, Mike? Um, I, I got a weird text message from work, so I got distracted for a second. Sorry. Okay. All right. All right so uh, we got your one line concept, your high, uh, one line description, high concept, motivation, a couple problems, uh, yes. connection. Uh, uh, Sister Rothy. Yeah, connection to Senrathi is um, basically they're my only hope of a continued life. Um, I depend on their healing to keep the rot at bay. Right. Um, 
the connection to Vash that we have bonded over family crazy. Yeah, we both have family shit going on, and maybe at some point we ended up talking about it, since I'm kind of bound to Senrathi, and Vashla is sort of uh, bodyguarding. It's like, so what, what's your story? I was like, yeah. I don't think I think that highly of case. Wow, okay. Well, I'll, I'll get rid of that then. You you kind of just you kind of said you came down and you just murdered a bunch of people. Yeah, you um, don't know that. You're not my dad. <laughs> you're not. Well, no, your dad. dad's Outside dead. Of... We uh, found you outside a a massacred village. <laughs> yes, covered in blood. Yes. Yeah. And rot. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say with the stuff that we discussed earlier, that kind of makes the ideals, bonds, and flaws I did come up with a little more messed up. I like it so, more this way. Like, do it. Responsibility. I do what I must and obey just authority. Lawful. Bonds. Someone saved my life on the battlefield. To this day, I will never leave a friend behind. And flaws. I made a terrible mistake in battle that cost many lives, and I would do anything to keep that mistake secret. Your mistake was not killing Keith. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Feeling attacked right now, guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> like that village you murdered. <laughs> they hey, pa it? paste that, paste that into the uh, the the shared setting creation doc that you were grayed out in at the moment. Oh, the uh, traits, ideals, bonds, flaws. Yeah, yeah. There, there are also sections on the character sheet. Oh, like in the thing. Yeah, yeah. that's where I was reading it from. Oh, but that's like I, click, I know, right? Like, a whole more time. Yep. Uh, I'm going to throw mine in as well. Um, right. Do you, well, Andrew, are you still Andrew's fighter? Because there's an Andrew's fighter no, in here. There's an Andrew's fighter that I was just putzing around with making yeah. a fighter. Okay. Um, I want to lose it. Oh, you can nuke them. I don't care. I literally forgot they existed until I opened the campaign back up again. Yeah, we were doing like carriage and it was like, oh, I can do this like really ridiculous stuff with longbows. I want to change Fritz's for for last name to Srimmons. <laughs> 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 It's a good Nova no, 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 like Fritz. He's clearly Fritz Leopold. All right, Fritz Srimmons makes this funnier. Well, yeah, I mean Fritz Leopold. Uh, so Geek Grand Yorha, Senra Cobb, Chosen of Error. I still like that. Uh, and Vassal Stormforge. Cool. All right, so we have a party. Uh, does everybody have like connections and shit to each other? Yes, I have a connection to everyone but Fritz. Yeah, I think Fritz is kind of the outsider of the group, unfortunately. How, why do I not Vashla easier? What? When I click on Vashla, it gets me this. <laughs> what? Oh, I did double click it. I double click it. It's... Okay. Fritz, did you do you maybe like help like provide me with uh, like weaponry and crap? Because well, so I, we have. Fritz does it. Yeah, bye, Mike. Go ahead. Let's finish what you're saying, and then I got a thing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I kind of made Fritz as the 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 support, if you will, You're the, the technical support the for the group. Yeah. What's what's the reality that like, what's the justification for the five of us? Like, I'm assuming we've been handed some task from people at the Ash Wardens who are employing so, myself, Yorha, and Fritz. So you you and, guys are like have known each other before. You fought yeah. together. There yep. is some one of you has the impetus to do a thing. Uh, and the thing is, is that one of the nearby villages uh, is no longer sending grain and that is a problem. Go fix okay. it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So go to village Southern McBumfuck and yeah. figure out why grain stop. Right. Okay. Um, so I mean, like, is, is Fritz the, uh, God, is, <laughs> is Fritz like, I mean, our like the Ash Warden's highest ranked member of the field. Is he the team leader, maybe? God. That's That's great with my negative charisma. <laughs> I mean, but I mean, you're you're like, your whole thing is like the support and like you're going to remove obstacles so the rest of us can do our things better individually. Yeah, you don't need charisma to lead. You need like competence or charisma. Yeah. And you've got whichever the one I said that wasn't charisma. You're a gnomish I, uh, inventor. Yeah. Fritz is, is not street smart or charismatic. Fritz is the, the so I mean, like, bookish. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm Good like. leader for them to have put you in charge. 
Like I, I'm, Sorry. I, it feels like I'm sort of falling into a leadership role, but like, I, I honestly could imagine like Fritz being like the technical officer slash handler slash like kind of maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I could see it being thrust upon him for sure. Yeah. It's not something but that is, he wanted to do, is, but. Is your dad rich? Oh my God. Uh, your little gnome dad. I haven't really thought of a family situation, but it could be. That could be how he was, you know. Your little atheist gnome dad. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, so. Yeah, so giving like, like, a rot infested bird, uh, a a a soldier out of time, um, Robin Hood, and their bodyguard, right, like. Oh my god, you're little John. <laughs> I mean he's little fits. No no. Vashla is little John. Yeah. Oh Vashla. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It's but like weird. a dwarf and yes. oh my god. Yes. Oh, Damn. I'm a bad people. Go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Not Lil John, Little John. Oh, sorry. Out there I don't understand Canadian accents. Little John is funny. Not one I'm proficient <laughs> in. I, yeah, I haven't killed any Canadian villages to where I need to learn their language yet. Listen, we're really far up north. <laughs> we're kind of hard to find. It's a bit of a walk. You do need somebody who is like Fritz's establishment, right? Mm-hmm. And a, so, presumably a known quantity. And a, did you say a known, known quantity? quantity. <laughs> Our entire podcast loves the pun. I'm so sorry, no. everyone. No, we don't. <laughs> Do not love you, this everyone. I'm sorry, no, yeah. we don't. Oh god, it's gonna be like that forever. You chose a gnome. You, you knew what you were getting into. Gone gnome. <laughs> Gone gnome. <laughs> Anyway, um, I do like the idea that Vasha and Fritz like had known each other like when Fritz was getting started, and she runs into him again, and she's just like, "Oh, hey, look, you know, look how far you've came. You've really uh, gotten yourself to a really a much higher position, and then probably something shitty about you know still being shorter than the dwarf." <laughs> um, Adam, I remember. Vaguely, the last time we did this, that you talked about maybe how they wanted to get rid of you because you were going to revolutionize gun technology or something like that. <laughs> it's either that or just causing too many explosions in the. Uh... It it seems like packing packing a support personnel up into a group of people they're sending to go clear out villages <laughs> is maybe a decent way to, at least, temporarily if not permanently. Especially if you're kind of like sheepish and they expect one of the three different murder hobos in the party to get impatient at some point. We we have a literal <laughs> demon literal devil person. We have a caveman <laughs> a murder bird. Wait, who's the devil? Oh yeah. Hi. The devil Jesus. That's yes, that is the the thing that I was doing. Was a person who looks like the devil. He does look like a man. thing like Jesus, but he talks like a gentleman. Like uh, he, like you imagined when you were young. Like you imagined him when you were young. Oh, very nice. Um, yeah, there's got to be like some some error of like unless you guys are like y'all are like cleaners and not in that respectable word. I mean. But why are I, you doing anything for the Ashton? Um, I, I I mean because it's like it's do these things or the world dies is my read of it. Like they are mission critical. Yeah. Like Rick and I mean they send me because I like burn out rot magically, and you know. Okay, I asked the wrong question. Do. I asked the wrong question. What was your first adventure that we didn't show because um Save it for the prequel. Right. 
the sort first of thing. So, like, like, what, what, so, like, Sinrathi is attached to the um, Ashen Ash Wardens already, right? Yep. Uh, there, uh, Sinrathi is a um, troubleshooter of sorts, a fiery troubleshooter, right? You've got a bodyguard, Vashla. Yorha, at some point in time, wakes up and follows the scent of divine magic until she finds you. Uh, Yorha, gender, gendered question mark? Dude. Pronouns? Dudes? Okay. Uh, 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 he followed the scent of divine magic until he found Senrathi. Um, Fritz is um, gun cleric, but like only heals guns. Uh, <laughs> he heals them with more ammo. <laughs> right. Uh, and Kaif was the murder hobo that so, I mean, like, maybe Fritz, the unspoken mission zero is going to check out this other village that also stops sending grain because they're all dead. Uh huh. Oh, no. May, that, yeah, maybe their first mission is like th their little detachment of four getting sent to do a thing, and then they find me face down in the mud with wings mostly rotted off. Well, they, they don't rot off, they rot into more, they rot out. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. My wings so, turn to weird legs. Weird, weird beetle. By or the time like, we get there, like like squid tentacles. The dia they're like squid tentacles with diaphanous wings underneath them. Yeah. Am I unconscious? And the tentacles are trying to like pull me into the forest or something so I can die. <laughs> and then it so gets more control over you. Exactly. Or you can heal and not drown in mud. Yeah. Um. God, that's like a reverse baptism because it's raining in this scene. Guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So, Fritz, are you a straight... Not straight. Like, a, the straight man? Like, everybody else here has these divine or rot-touched legacy. Like, Vashla's home was driven up by the rot. Yorha and Sarnathi are touched by the old gods. Kaith um, was... Uh, is a magical bird person that uh, is rot flecked. Um... Like, do you have, uh, your motivation is not, um, you're just, just like, yeah, I want to, I want to make, I want to make guns better. And like, I don't really care about the gods. I want to like steal technology and make it awesome again. Yeah. I think his driving force is his passion for his craft. It's not, I mean, the, everything else is sort of incidental. I, I mean, the other solutions problems that he can make a solution for, but that's not really something that he cares what the problem is. I mean, is part of it also field testing your latest creations? Well, it will be now, yeah. Need a bond for you to these people that is way tighter. I know. Um... I mean, I handlers mean, are pretty tight bond. Test subjects. <laughs> well, like, handlers the guy are they... subordinates. In the legitimate authority of the Ash Wardens, you could be our commanding officer. Adam, are you comfortable with that? Yeah. That sounds like, it sounds interesting. Okay. I mean, it's certainly a role that was thrust upon Fritz that yeah. he's probably yes. not ready for, but... So, like, that feels like a battlefield promotion of some sort. <gasps> oh my god, who was our last captain? That's right. a really good question, actually. Oh. And, like, Fritz had some sort of connection to them. It was the second in command. It was never expected... Like, I don't want to make that Captain Adam Jensen or whatever, right? But, like, um... <laughs> he yeah, never asked for this. this. Well, Fritz didn't ask for this, right? Yeah. And, I mean, I, the other thing that I can totally imagine is Fritz growing into the role. Yeah. Yeah, so you definitely have the bishop. Um, or wait, who's the, who's the, the guy that would... Did we used to be a bigger deal until we got this person killed? Like we had never failed a mission or something. How many like, other people died with them? Yeah. Like how bad was the beats we took? Yeah. And why was it Vashla's fault? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I forgot about that. Um... 
No, this but is it has very to be, good. It, it's a secret, though. Well, so it, it doesn't have to be a publicly known why yeah. it's your fault. It could be a secret well, within the five of us. Right, and that's why you all know that. Yeah. That's why you're all together. Well, and I mean, it's it's also why they don't trust us with another captain. Uh huh. Like, they demanded an official report, and something didn't add up between the five of us. And I imagine, like, Kate is part of the party at that point. So, like, it's essentially busy work to keep us out of camp until they figure out what's wrong. So there's, like, an internal affairs digging into us? Mm -hmm. They're trying to figure out why the new recruit refuses to go in for a physical? <laughs> Turn your head and cough. Squaw! <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Are you at all sentimental, Vashla? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to look for my family's relics, so... Okay. This is gonna suck, but... <laughs> Do it. <laughs> That's the best opening line. Grind her to dust! <laughs> so, your sister or your brother, like someone you cared about you sister. were close to... Brother. Twin. Brother. No. We're not doing there. that again. <laughs> it was there, right? It was at yeah. this battlefield that thing that was going on. Uh, and you turned a blind eye to the fact that they were already infected. Oh, um, yeah. And because of Ooh. that, the entire like garrison fell. They went full Resident Evil 4 yeah. for a zombie yeah. thing? Yeah. Uh, God, that's... I can't go home to my mom until I come back with all the relics, because otherwise it's not worth it. Come back with his shield or on it. <laughs> See, but that would probably be a lot easier to achieve. Or so here's At the other thing: does mom if it's know a, he's dead? If it's a yeah. big sister, because it already sounds like these dwarves are matriarchal. Yeah, I was yeah. actually thinking that too. If it's a big sister and you weren't like the crown princess, no, it's shady. Ow. Mm. Well, no, no it, it's got to be like it's got to be like, you know, um. It's it's that decision you make in Bioware games, right? It's, yeah. Right? It's like, oh, you know, they'll probably be fine. It's not a big deal. You know, I'll get Sinrathi to land hands on him later. And Kaiden can okay. guard the and, nuke. It'll be fine. Right. <laughs> well, and, 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 and here's and, the thing, right? I'm in the party. So we like, people come back from the dead. That's a thing that can happen now. So, like, thing we do. I mean, it's not a thing that can happen now. It's a thing that you're guiding me to do in the future. But we can so totally we can... keep his bones in a box. Where are you keeping his it. teeth someplace? Or like his ashes for, or, for, how long for some Rathi to raise a little? Well, well, so, no, no, no. Well, as soon as you put them in your mouth. Your has, <laughs> your has tradition. Your has tradition is that they, they cut off an arm and store it in a reliquary. Yeah, we cut it's off a, a finger? finger. Okay. I don't, so I don't so, really want to be that person that keeps my dead baby brother in a jar and carried around. Only part of it. The entire I mean, point so is that he's not always going to well, be the, dead, though, right? Like, well, that's dad, right? Father issues are big in video games. So <laughs> so maybe it's that you thought that you could save him. Like, keep him alive long enough. Yorha knows how to, like, cut off a bit of the limb so that we can bring him back from the dead. And it got too far. We took too long. And, like, the body had fully succumbed to the rot. The soul was dead. I'm not actually sure I want to do a sibling thing for this specific character. Um, okay. I, I do it enough with a bunch of my other characters, so... Well, it was just, I made a terrible mistake in battle. I was trying to play off the flaw there. Yeah, no, I... I yeah, I... I mean, was I, it not a person and was it a thing? Or, or are you, like, just? Right? Did you spare the life of an enemy and in doing yeah. so, doom you all? <laughs> <laughs> or did you spare the life of someone else, like close to you? Maybe someone who surrendered. Like Kate wandering around in the woods, all infected and stuff. Is that, I go, that's probably fine. Is I'm it just gonna... Kate <laughs> that spawned all this shit? <laughs> and Vashla refused the order to kill. I don't know. Um, I, th I think Maybe actually I Vashla and Kate would, would get along, but um... I mean, you don't have to get along with the person that accidentally murdered your entire regiment. <laughs> Well, I'm apparently just, and I'll never leave someone on the battlefield, so... Yeah. Um, so maybe I didn't get to Kaith in time, and the rot spread and the regiment died. Maybe. Um, and that gives Kaith a fuck of a burden to feel like 
she has to repay and yeah. Vashla. I just, that mistake, man. I like, I, I have the, the perverse desire to make that like no, super. I, I agree. I, I just, it doesn't have I, to be like, it could be um someone that you're bound to not just by like, could have been a significant other or yeah, a family I was, member. Or, I was or, also like, thinking since I was a mercenary, someone that I, I used to do a lot of jobs with. Like a shield brother of some sort. I was gonna say you could be Aveline. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yes, my consort. The prince consort is dead. And now I have no interest in continuing the family line. <laughs> oh, wow. Which has got way more problems because you're the heir. Yeah. But I'm getting all of our stuff back. Right. Yeah. Here's yeah. our stuff, mom. But also, I quit. Here's I, our like, stuff, mom. I, I got my tubes. School. I got my tubes <laughs> magically tied. I'm trying to do it to like abdicate gracefully. Oh, it's so it's it's. Well, I've seen some is the wrong shit. word, but yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So yeah, your terrible mistake was was being kind, right? Yeah. Uh, for the the prince consort, you. I don't know if you covered it up necessarily, right? Well, they died anyway. But they died anyway, uh, and uh, uh, the rot spread because of that. Yeah. Uh, Fritz got a battle for your promotion, and uh, you all found Kate, Kate in like a subsequent adventure, or they were that they you, there was like a pitched battle between your regiment and Kate. It makes Kate that to be pretty hardcore. Yeah, yeah it does. That's, that's that's a lot to live up to. I mean, yeah. Rot Kaith could have a bunch of bullshit. Ooh, you could have like, powers. yeah, but like, like to be uh, he also Magus murder, and Chrono to... Trigger. I'm sorry, Magus and Chrono Trigger. I've not, I'm not. I haven't played that game. It's a boss fight, and then you get him in your party. Spoilers for the game that's literally older than Jordan. I take offense to that. Yeah, Jordan's only Where's... like twelve, though, so that doesn't count. Where's the lie, though? <laughs> First of all. <laughs> It's okay. It's okay. I'm, we all I'm, take turns feeling attacked tonight. The, the Atari, the original Atari, is slightly older than I am, but only slightly. I might actually be true. I might actually be older. Than Chrono Trigger came out in March 1995. Shit, I'm older than the Atari. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not doing this on air. It's fine. 95. I'm older. <laughs> I'm as old as the method for manufacturing this delicious beer I am drinking. That's very specific. Okay. Uh, you're not gonna be specific. Why bother? Right. Oh, so this no, this is perfect. Okay, okay. great. So we've got um, so uh, it's got a battle for promotion, right? Uh, we've got Vashla, who another pro one of their problems are, um, uh. I think Let I'm actually my... not sure if I want to continue inheriting or not. I'm reacting like out of grief at the moment. Um, but I'm pretty convinced I don't want to. Well, and like self guilt, survivor's guilt, yeah. whole thing. Yeah, maybe I wasn't always so serious. But why so serious? Okay, so did not burn my prince consort at the first sight of rot and lost the garrison and my commanding officer. So Fritz got battlefield promotion after uh, Vashla's terrible mistake in battle. You rolled that flaw. I'm totally going to use that because it's great. Yeah, no, I, 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 enjoyed, I enjoy the misery knife twisting. Good. Uh, that's, to... that's the basis of Gastown's success. Yeah. <laughs> it's a basis a basis of game success, you know. Say, welcome to Dungeons and or Dragons. <laughs> right. Well, I mean the good the good kind, right? Yeah. All right, so fun. um Dungeons is right in the name. It's not like torture is a thing that the game doesn't do. Drama so, is a close up, comedy is a wide shot. Drama and depression. <laughs> I can't be depressed. I'm listening to Giles theme in the background right now. Do, 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 do. Yeah, exactly. 
It goes with everything. <laughs> it's true. So um, the inciting incident for the campaign um, is uh, you've got your orders. There's another village that's gone silent and don't screw it up this time. <laughs> wow, rude. Wow, rude. I mean, where's the lie, though? No, I mean, there's, it's not. But I mean, you, you know, you could just be less of a dick about it. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing like, no, I can't. A high, a high, like ranking official who probably had like decently irreplaceable knowledge of tactics and logistics and similar is dead along with like a couple dozen people. Yeah. Well, at the same time, even, even beyond that, right? Like if these are, this, this, if this gray wardens or these ash wardens, there we go. Right? Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> or anything like the 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 group we're we're putting we're putting together like we're using as their their blueprint or the like actual historical crusades right the commanding officers were actually kind of important people from important families anyway right like this was probably a not minor noble that died and our screw up may actually be putting like proper proper rot battle funding at risk now, or something. Uh, and like, um, I mean, this is the South, right? And there's not that many nobles left. Uh-huh. So maybe, you, maybe you've risked an entire line. <laughs> yeah. Did we just did we just end end the dynasty? Yeah. Like Ooh, like an, like a like a like an offshoot from the emperor dynasty sort of thing. Oh, like, like th- to the point where we've left like one or two proper claimants to the throne. In like this guy was like third or fourth in line, and nobody thought he was going to come up because he's going to die in battle anyway. Like I think like, I'm thinking like a backup line, like uh, like what's his face, the blonde guy that was insufferable. Anders in Dragon Age. No, that wasn't his name. It's with an A. Oh yes. I'm oh sorry. I thought you were talking about Alistair. Mass Effect. Alistair. Alistair. Yeah. Really, I would have gone for Anders. No, Alistair was kind of too bubbly and like he Both also of... co- he had a lot of like gay innuendo that didn't pan out Alistair. for some reason. But I was it was it was two games too early apparently for that. Both of them what? were blonde and insufferable for different reasons. He talked about licking lampposts in winter as a. Yeah. Very direct metaphor for losing one's virginity. Oh, link. But he was explicitly straight. Yeah. Hey, sometimes the ladies have got a dick, you know? So That's fair. <laughs> but it might not be a particularly <laughs> wide net to cast in this case. All right, it is a magical <laughs> realm we're talking about. So. That's also true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know. I, don't I know even that know we achieved, at, folks. I know that we achieved peak game when both Jordan and Aaron are mute their microphones. No, yeah. I didn't mute my microphone though. But holy not, shit! Not this time. There we go. There yeah. we go. <laughs> the giggles are spreading. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't work. So, you can't actually it's do that. It's not difficult thing. to make me laugh. No, no, oh, how did you? That's not fair. You were super. Ha- oh, you okay. didn't see the can. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Aaron, <laughs> stop laughing, Jordan. Aaron, yeah. Hi, hi. Choo choo. Yeah, exactly. Okay, um, let's yeah, get this train back on the fucking said, tracks. I said, I said are we missing Adam anything? Back. Guys, I said choo choo and Adam came back. Hi, oh, I'm just messing. I had to reload. <laughs> Roll twenty, so I'm back for like I'm five gone seconds. Again. I'm gone again. <laughs> I missed you. Okay. And, uh, yes. Moving, moving right along. Choo choo. What's up, Michael? Um, are we missing anything? No, I don't think so. I disappeared. No, but I think we have everybody in voice. Um, yeah. Yeah. And Aaron's just got a paperweight on her forehead. Fuck. It's got balls. In yeah. It. It's like a toy. <laughs> I, I don't understand it. I think it's a toy. Okay, so um, we've got 
uh, the the prologue and the the, and the fiction, right? We've got the conceits mm-hmm. for the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got desirable campaign themes, which I don't know if those are necessarily what were like. I'm not sure how valuable they are at the moment. We think we think they seem to have gone slightly sideways. So we'll revisit those later. Yep. Uh, we're going to avoid things that are boring. We're uh, specifically hanging out in the Southern Kingdom with the uh, understanding that, it, that it, the Inquisition and religious persecution and covering from still recovering after hundreds of years from 80% population loss. Well, I mean, how long has it been since 80% of their populace died? 300 years. Two, two oh. 300 years. I mean, and at the same time, like, it's kind of hard to rebuild a civilization, A, that's that understaffed, and B, that constantly has to worry about interdimensional bad stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, I, right. and I mean, like, I bet the North has been supplying, like, children. soldiers and people and, well, I mean, people gonna fuck, so there will be children, too. But I think... More uh, orphans to the South. For the whole Paragon thing, we have to, like, declare what we're going to do, like, when, before we inherit or, you know, as the heir. I probably made some like really big ass speech about like me and my consort. We're gonna go to the south and get back what's ours. And I absolutely refuse to go home empty handed. So, yeah. So you were working. You were working with the Ash Wardens. Were you? Are you an Ash Warden? Yeah, I think so. Especially because, like, Fritz and I, like, at one point had worked together. I went away for a while. I came back. And, you know, like, I'm really impressed with where Fritz is now. Because, like, I think we we said earlier, Fritz learned how to do some sort of smithing, basic smithing from me years ago. Um, And... It, I think dwarf maturity, like they don't become adults till fifty, so I'm probably a couple of decades old. Power armor. Hmm. <laughs> the the gnome's going to build us things, right? Campaign theme of power armor. I'm just curious. <laughs> Can we just be like, what's the what's the word? Uh, for Iron Man. Like, we have no, the for exact like those, number of people the, be Voltron, goddammit. Japanese <laughs> the Japanese robot shows. What's the word? Sentai. There's Wait. gonna be a super Sentai show. <laughs> Sentai's not the one that's porn. Nope. nope. That's no. porn. <laughs> I broke Aaron with a single <laughs> Japanese word. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, okay, so if we've got our themes, things to avoid, location, faction, player characters, we've got a world. Um, I can link, I'll link it a couple different times. i got to like flesh out the world a bit, give places names. Jordan mentioned that none of the places have names, which is sort of problematic. Names are good. Southtopia. Oh, <laughs> um... Maybe another reason we have Fritz along is there's got to be like rubble and stuff that we have to clear that we can't really do by hand. He's a demo man. Yeah. What makes him a good demo man? He's Scottish for starters. Well, I was I was gonna... Gonna... <laughs> if he isn't a good demo man, he wouldn't be sitting here talking to yeah, us. Yeah, I, 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 I was going to say that. <laughs> so I mean, that's, on that's this globe. Right. You find for me south. <laughs> the bottom. Oh, God, I have no idea. Like, what's going to wind up happening? Words, is that... And when they're pointing up the right way, up is north. Yes, but like, I don't know what the rot meridian is, I guess, is the thing. Like, now I just have the tragically hip stuck in my head. There's some way on there to put uh, longitude and latitude lines. I don't remember how, but there's like a. Really? Yeah. There's a thing. It's a whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah, excuse me. Because, like, I imagine the Bloodmore River is probably on the rot side. Is that the Mason Dixon in this? But, wow. There are so many really pretty options to do here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Oh shit! Is there another Jurassic Park movie coming out? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> a year. <laughs> Where did that even come from? I, I'm bringing up YouTube so I can upload this thing once we finish, and then it just says official trailer Jurassic Park. Ch so you also just dated the crap out of this. Yeah. Hi, it is currently How about the third Thursday, New December seventh, twenty seventeen. There we go. I mean, we we upload them to YouTube Live, but this will be in the podcast thursday slot in like a hot year assuming that neutrality doesn't fuck no. us what do you mean no no because uh i think we still got what the dresden files i thought those were monday yeah those would those would be a monday show mm. anything where we have to edit the audio i figure is monday that's our prime time slot and then thursday is our we rip this off of our video yeah slot Plot is a weird word. So we've moved on from talking about the game to talking about um, the podcast. I, I, it feels like we've reached an end of world building. Yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Yeah. Uh, we're solid. We'll come up with uh, fun, happy things to do for the first uh, session, and we'll do that next week. Okay. Uh, I was going to tell everybody to go to our crowdfunding thing, but I'm going to not right now because they're Patreon. They did an update. Apparently, basically, PayPal is taking all of the extra fees because they want to change it where it's not one lump sum transaction. They're going to bill per thing that you back. That's shit. So it still sounds very shit. Um, so it's an evolving. Shit. It's still an evolving situation, uh, and we're reviewing it because, you know, it's December 7th, 2017. Yep. Um, and this is an ongoing issue, and yes. we're looking at it critically. And uh, we'll let you know. Um, but in the meantime, yeah, uh, hit up our website. We're at thatdndpodcast.com. Uh, if you're watching us on Twitch or if you would like to watch us on Twitch, we can be found at www.twitch.tv slash thatdndpodcast, all lowercase. And it's not an ampersand. It's an N. Yep. Um, if you want to interact with us socially, we are That D, &D Podcast on Facebook and Twitter. Um, it's all spelled the same. D, letter N, D. If you have a burning, burning desire to um, uh, buy us a coffee in the meantime, uh, shoot us a direct message on Twitter and we'll hook you up. Yep, we'll figure something out. Um, and also, if you are interested in playing in the Argent Springs campaign, that is going to kick off Season 2 uh, some point early next year. Um, side stuff permitting, that's it's a whole thing. Don't worry about that part. Um, so if you have interest, let us know and we will let you know when we're doing things. Yes, George. I have only one burning desire. <laughs> Let me stand next to your fire. <laughs> Boom. All right, folks. Uh, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, this has been uh, another... Uh... Does, does Jordan want to say a thing, or is that a different thing? No, okay. I was just waving. It's okay. an offline thing. Okay. All right. Um, this has uh, been a, the world generation set, set, setting. Oh, uh, if you are interested in D&D... Uh, Wizards of the Coast produces a game called Dungeons and Dragons. We're playing fifth edition, sort of. Um, but uh, we're all super jazzed right now, so I think I've got uh, I've got a good feeling about this. Good feeling. I'm definitely not working on game materials for converting this over to Genesis. That's definitely not the <laughs> thing that I'm currently working on. Okay. Okay. I mean, if you are, that's fine and probably useful in the next three to five weeks because people just, know me pretty well. I guess you just reskin the Terminators to be the rot, and it's probably the same feel bad um, no, also, no. also also just there is a hobby outside of D, D. but if you like D, D, then honestly more power to you it i am all for nerds rolling dice that appeal to them yes and I, th I think part of the reason we explore different things is so that we can kind of get a better feel uh as a group for what we like what we don't and i don't know if you've noticed mike has said several times oh i really like this from from this play set and i really like this from this at some point, we're going to have, like, distilled RPG broth from so many different things, and it's going to make, like, the best soup, and then it's going to be great. I really want soup when it's cold outside. Anyway, yeah. everybody have a good night. I'm going to stop the stream now. <laughs> <laughs> night, everybody. Bye, everybody.